All right. All right. <laughs> Three, two, one. What is up, Drama Alert Nation? This I am your host, <laughs> Killer Keemstar, and let's get right into the news. Into the news. What the fuck? Am I in the right place? Uh, no, no. This is the this is the last place you want to be. Anyway, oh. uh, this is this is a podcast that we all started called Sardonicast. Um, what is what does that mean? What 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 is sardonic? What is sardonicism? Yeah. Well, we had to look it up. <laughs> uh, I went on a th- thesaurus because we were looking for names for the podcast, <laughs> and uh, I looked for I looked for synonyms of things like sarcasm and sardonicism seemed to be an appropriate, uh, not necessarily synonym, but something that was close enough to sarcasm. It sounded sexy and, and different. Damn right. And uh, you mm-hmm. know what? Before I go any further, we should introduce ourselves, shouldn't we? We're kind of Absolutely. we're kind of fucking winging this. We have no idea what we're doing. Um, you guys go first. Uh, I'm I'm Adam. Uh, I I review movies on a channel called Your Movie Sucks YMS. Uh, I do other things too, but we'll get into that later. Uh, who are, who are you guys? I don't know you. Um, let, I'm let Alex. The go first. I'm Alex. God, fucking Yanks. Um, from I Hear Everything, and I make videos as well. I'm not even you just search Ralph. it if you want. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were still talking. No, no, it's fine. You go ahead. I'm Ralph Seppi. I have a YouTube channel, Ralph the Movie Maker. YouTube.com slash Ralph the Movie Maker. Um, Twitter.com slash Ralph the Movie Maker. All right, all right. Oh, chill. Save, save that. <laughs> Pornhub.com slash Ralph the Movie Maker. <laughs> I actually do have that because of the Nutshack video. Okay, cool. Ooh. We can get into that later. Oh, mm-hmm. what kind of a nut, nut shack is it? Oh, it's uh, they took it down. So <laughs> apparently, it's not. oh, it's, it was it's too not risky not for yet. Pornhub. It was YouTube wouldn't accept it. Not even Pornhub will accept it. So for the <laughs> give up for the brief amount of time where the Nut Shack was a meme, that song was in my head all the fucking time, and it's really bad. It's not a good song at all. It's a terrible song. Um, do you have the ten hour version on your iPod? Because I do. Uh, <laughs> I don't have an iPod anymore. I used to. Why not? Um, you have an Android? Are you one of those fucking guys? Yes. <laughs> well, and y- even if I even if I didn't have an Android, I'd have something like an iPhone, not an iPod. Um, yeah, well, adult you know. has an iPod. Yeah. Shut yeah, up. Jesus. You have a fucking analog telephone, probably, Alex. Excuse me. I'm not <laughs> you in a still third have world country. In that fucking not in a fucking country. third world country. <laughs> uh, anyway, if you haven't noticed from our voices. Um, I uh, we're we're all from different countries, so it's a a pain in the ass to get this coordinated. Uh, but mm. so I'm I'm from Canada, and uh, Al- Alex is a a Brit bong, and uh, yep, Ralph Ralph is from Mur- the Muricas, and uh, yeah. so hopefully there will be a lot of uh, racial tension in this show. Mm. There is in I the five so. minutes we've been we going. We all already. hate already. each other. Um, yeah, so. Making America great again. Well, <laughs> you've shown your true colors. <laughs> Five We're in my hat thousand right dislikes. Now. Uh, yep. Anyway. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> They're already clicking off. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. Rip. We can just talk about whatever we want now. Uh, we just no did, the, we just did the podcast speed run for when people stop watching. Yeah. Man. Okay. Sweet. The average uh, watch time will be five minutes anyway. So. Uh, <laughs> We're we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about what uh, sardon- sardonicism is. Um, That's right. It's it's essentially a a more um, like morbid or depressing kind of negative version of sarcasm. So it's not necessarily car- sarcasm. It's sarcasm with with a a darker kind of connotation to it. And I thought about that when I was looking through different names and. Um, I realize that uh, our channels kind of inhibit that more so than mm-hmm. a lot of other channels do. There's plenty of yeah. of sarcastic kind of either commentary or film uh, based channels out there, but we seem to be ones that are particularly uh, uh, what's the we word? Have the I don't know. Um, yeah, <laughs> pessim- That's a good way of pessimistic. Or negative, negative. focused, you Me. know, like, uh, like, yep. like other podcasts you listen to to like liven up your day. We're going to make you want to kill yourself. Yeah. <laughs> See, there it is. Well, maybe. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not like an etymologist or a linguist or I'm not, 
Uh-huh. I'm not like the biggest pro on the English language, but I think I think we got something that works. You know, I think I think that yeah. that this we is different. Yeah. And you know what? Above all else, the name wasn't taken <laughs> anywhere. Mm-hmm. I know. How often does that happen? Any, thing. any yeah. piece of media. Every, there was not one song or one podcast or movie yeah. or television show or book. I Sardonicast in Google and it turned zero results. What the fuck? Mm-hmm. So it was really easy creating all these different accounts. It was yeah. it was like a gift from the meme gods. So while we were uh, while we were discussing uh, you know the <laughs> podcast and what names we should be discussing, uh, we actually came up with a few of them, um, and mm. I think you guys have them saved or written down. Yeah, I should you need to go somewhere. through your list. You have, I them? have yeah. them. Okay, yeah. so you're, you, then these, these are. These are the other names that we were considering before before we decided to to do Sardonicast. Let me just note that I've had to omit some of them because they were so offensive. I had to like what? leave them out. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, say them, but no, don't. No, no, like, no, no, I have I have like loads of them, but there were a couple okay. that I was like, okay, I'm not going to include that one. I'll tell you. I'll right, tell you. Right. I'll tell you which which ones they were after. Mm-hmm. So the the safe for work ones are another podcast, which was kind of bland that's bad the i think i think i came up with that one yeah you did the why do we even bother show oh the these Brit are really Yank lame and canuck yeah they're yeah. really lame yeah you know what i would the, never want to refer to myself as a canuck as much as as yeah, much as i love I my country if that was racist and as much as i feel like my country is much better than those shitholes that you guys live in um <laughs> oh okay i think I that canuck is just it is. such a, it just sounds bad you know canuck it does sound it's bad. Such a, it's I, such I was... a lame thing to refer to yourself as. I'm Canadian. I'm not a Canuck. What the hell is that? Mm. That's lame. Yeah. What about like a Yank? A Yank isn't like it doesn't sound good, does it? It's quite You're the only wank. people that call y- Yankees. I don't know. I, I don't hear anyone ever calling Americans Yankees except British people. Yeah. And Canadians. No, no, we don't well, call I'm you Yankees. Canadian. We call you Yanks. <laughs> Yanks. Oh, Yanks. Right, well, not whatever. Yankees. Yeah. Because you're always yanking yourselves off. Yeah. Huh. I don't well, actually that's know true. the origin. Yeah. Um, We're number one. I feel like a, it's based on the baseball team, the Yankees. Is it? Is that really the origin no. of it? I think yeah, that I maybe say, the Yankees that, are based lame. off of the word yank. <laughs> maybe it's the other <laughs> way around. They jerked off each other. Yeah. Th- this one's actually quite good. Cool cast saves the kids. <laughs> Aww. Uh, I like we'd that get one. sued immediately by fake lawyers yeah. that don't exist. <laughs> 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 um, I don't know why this one is in here. Um, but fat sluts with big butts is is, is I, just in I, there. I for think some... that, was, that, one? that was not mine. Who did that? That's probably that was Alex. definitely Adams. No, it wasn't me. Oh but, sure, um, oh sure. I, I don't understand this one <laughs> either. It's just I H E Y M S and Ralph in brackets <laughs> the faggot. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> 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 Who did that? I did. I'm, I did that, that because I just wanted to take a stab at Ralph. Oh, okay. It, it's like <laughs> Thanks, I-H-E, buddy. YMS, and Ralph the faggot. Oh, but, oh okay. So you're calling uh, me that? Yeah. So, All but right. hey, uh, precursor. Anybody who might be offended by the usage of the that word on this show, I'm actually gay. So, uh, sorry, yeah. you can't. I'm, I'm, I'm not gay, so I'm not gonna say it. Well, it's okay because you. I can give you a, a card. A special card that oh, allows yeah? you to say. Am it? I allowed yeah. one F card a, a, a podcast? <laughs> I don't. I'm not sure. I, I want to call it an F card that I give you, but uh, sure. Yeah, I, that's, <laughs> you know what? That's exactly what I want to call it. Okay. Well, <laughs> anyway, so yeah, in case uh, in case anybody wants to get offended, don't get offended on my behalf. Okay, it's all oh. right. It's, it's I was just all reading it off the list either. I didn't mean oh, it's like when people yeah, told just... you Bruno was homophobic. Oh, this is true. This is <laughs> yeah. Alex was just quoting something that I came up with. So okay, this is yeah. We're we're in the clear. I think technically on uh, television for censorship standards in the U.S., I think technically as long as the character's gay, they can say that. There's shows really? like I Wonder Shows so. in that have uh, gotten away with that, and I think South Park did an episode where they kind of played on that, where a black character said the N word, and they just did it a million times as long as it was said by a character. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 And so as long as it's that type of character saying it, it's fine on television standards, apparently. <laughs> Although television standards are getting more lax as time goes on because yeah. they're realizing... Censorship on television makes no sense with how well, they operate at all. at this point... You can just... show, like, really hardcore sex on TV as long as you don't show a nipple. 
which doesn't make any sense to or me. Or a willy. Or willy. You can't show yeah. a willy either. I mean, yeah, like, butts, willy. butts are okay now. At this yeah. point, television's realizing they have to compete with the internet. So, <laughs> I mean, you couldn't, right. you couldn't have a, a show like The Walking Dead, like, 10, 15 years ago, you know? It just wouldn't exist. No way. No. You know, on, no. like, network television. Maybe on HBO or something, I guess, but... Anyway, mm -hmm. continue. Definitely HBO. <clears throat> Hubbo. Another somewhat bland one. Sodcast. Ugh. So what, a, a, a podcast What's about it? dirt? Because we're a bunch of sods. <sighs> ah. my, my personal, this is my personal favorite one. Valerian and the City of Alex, Ralph, and Adam. <laughs> yes, that's, that's my favorite That's the one best too. one. Yeah. And I had another one, another variant, which was Alex, Ralph, and Adam and the City of a Thousand Planets. Yeah. <laughs> So you you just felt inspired by that film, is what you're saying? If if a Valerian is anything, it is inspiring. Yeah, it's a great film. It was a good. Um, <laughs> it was it was, it was a cool good, to watch uh... two hundred million dollars burn. On screen. <laughs> I I am always fascinated by films like that where I can just watch the money disappear. You know, where I'm just like, wow, that was a lot of people's jobs and a lot of a lot of resources that. Could have been used mm. to feed starving Africans, but, you know, instead we got Valerian. <laughs> or even just make a better movie. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it could, it could have been used for a million different things, you know, things that aren't just a complete waste. <laughs> <laughs> a so, complete waste of time and yeah. money, which it was. Thank you, Luc Besson. <laughs> thanks, Dane DeHaan. Yeah, thank you, thanks, Dane. Thanks, Cara Delevingne. You know, Dane DeHaan. So, so many. A lot of people. Thanks, Rihanna. Oh, yeah, thank you, Rihanna, for the... Uh, Futuristic mm. stripper scene that was not Best necessary. Uh, I haven't seen this movie, so I don't know. I've seen it twice. Twice? Oh, why? why? Yeah, because I watched it once at Curiosity, and then I got it as a joke Christmas present on 4K Blu-ray. Oh, and you <laughs> and wanted I thought, to see it in higher like... resolution? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, it, it looked pretty crisp. I actually I watched it, it when I was visiting my family for Christmas, also. Except I didn't watch it with my family. I watched it with some some you want to submit them to dumb it. guy named Shay, and we laughed, uh, and we cried. You cried. It was a, we uh, and you fell asleep because it's so long. It just a lot of it didn't uh, didn't make any sense, you know. No, like why is it the the you rules? Ahead, so. You know, they they have this this. I, okay, Ralph, you're about to learn about this movie because it's yeah. We have, I, I really want to. I mean, I want to hear about there's, it. There's there's this whole sequence in the uh, I guess near the beginning. First of all, very unlikable characters. There's two characters, two main unlikable. characters in this film. They are assholes. They are obnoxious, and it's it's so mm -hmm. confusing to figure out like who you're even supposed to be rooting for. These are like there's nothing about them that you could possibly like because they just act obnoxious the entire time. They get there's this whole opening first kind of um, not really opening, but it, it you know in the first third it's like of the a film there's this on big desert action yeah this big action sequence where there's like these two different planes of existence in the same location kind of and it's like there's basically there's a big desert and there's this this tour bus of people. That are basically. You sound insane. You sound like you're going it crazy. doesn't make any sense. I'm trying to. I'm trying to figure it out in my own head, but it doesn't make any sense. The most bizarre thing about that concept is how it's like they take so much time setting it up, and it seems like something that's going to have some kind of payoff or at least come back again in the movie. But they they spend like the the whole first thirty minutes doing this crazy action sequence, and nothing to do it's, with it ever comes back again. It's supposed to look very impressive, is from what I get. That's it. It's and just it, spectacle. Yeah, and and y you know, if it was if, if it was done properly, then perhaps I would have enjoyed it or be impressed. There's like in the mm -hmm. desert area, so not in the shopping mall, but in the same place in the de desert world. <laughs> um, there's. <laughs> There's all these guards watching on on outposts or whatever, like all the, these towers with sniper rifles, and I don't even really understand, like, why they're there. If people, because I mean, are they able to see? Are they looking at the the real world? You're or overthinking the, or the it. Other, You're overthinking oh, yeah. it. None of it makes any sense. It's pointless. The, ah, it's it's such a it's such a painful scene to to try and understand fully and when you present a concept like that you know when you present 
something that is seemingly intricate in this universe that you're supposed to care about, I kind of want to know more about it. And I'm kind of interested yeah. in, it in a way where I want to know how it works. And perhaps in the original, like, I think it was a gra- graphic novel or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, it was. And perhaps in the original source material, it was thoroughly explained and it made sense. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't. But in in the film, it's just it it just I whoa, it was so confusing and it's it seemed to contradict itself and not make any fucking sense and just leave a lot more <laughs> questions than than answers. Um, do you have anything else to say about this film? <laughs> yeah, Alex, uh, I I, I would actually say? recommend it to you, Ralph. Just just to, oh, in yeah? terms of how not to like make a movie. It is so bizarre because mm-hmm. it is so long. It's like two and a half hours long. And well, every movie has to be now. Yeah, yeah, it does. But the story is so is so ridiculously simple. You expect, oh, that running time is going to be justified by all these concepts like being delved into and explained. But it's just one character gets lost, the other character goes and finds them. The other character gets lost, that they go and find them. What does Cara Delevingne do in it? She's like a Valerian's boyfriend. Sorry, girlfriend. (laughs) (laughs) Boyfriend. Nice. (laughs) Wow, I wasn't seeing that coming. It's a lady boy. It's really Ooh. funny though, because at the beginning, Dane DeHaan has this speech about how, about how he's so like handsome and strong, and it's like, dude, you look like a <laughs> fucking gremlin. They cast you as the Green Goblin oh, for yeah. a reason. Dane DeHaan is you know, a, like a void of charisma. <laughs> he, he's my least favorite actor, maybe ever. He seems somehow ever? like in in every film except Chronicle that he's ever been in, he seems inappropriately cast, but in a way yeah. uh-huh. where you know. It's not like he's in films that would have been great without him. You know, yeah. Amazing Spider-Man 2, Valerian, whatever. It's not like he ruins those movies. He just makes them somehow worse. You know? Oh, yeah. Where it, it's, even it's, Cure for Wellness not, he was in. He's not even like... doing it any favors. I haven't seen Cure for Wellness yet, but I'm kind of... I know it's, I know it's mixed. I know the reception's oh, very it's... mixed. I'm excited yeah. to see it because it's Gore Verbinski, but that's about it. Yeah, it looks nice, but beside that, his performance, I'm telling you, I think he ruins the movie. Oh, really? He's one of the, really? I mean, oh, wow. the script is dumb as fuck, but he, <laughs> he's like the only thing you're supposed to attach oh, yourself no. to. Oh, that would be depressing. Film. And he just goes around like, ugh, well, I'm being the haunt. <laughs> well, I'm, well, you guys I'll really be sold me out. on Valerian. <laughs> Good. Good, because it Maybe. didn't, Valerian didn't really sell to anyone else. Yeah. Yeah. If only, if only <laughs> there were more yous in the world, maybe it would have made some money. Yeah. Man, yeah, what a waste. A uh, so were there what any other uh, uh, podcast names were, or was, were those the last ones? There was one more, which is also lame. Sulk cast, which is just terrible. Boo. And finally, Sardonic cast, which is what we decided on because there's a C. Yay. There, which does help. And that's Adam who came up with it, right? Yes. Yep. Yep. You went to I, I, and... I came up with none. So well, I'm very I think proud you were you sleeping. It yeah. was one of those, yeah. you know, oh. like when we're in our, our little chat. It's like we're all on in we're all in different time zones here. You just gotta yeah. you just gotta accept that at any given point in time, there's gonna be somebody missing from the chat, and just go with it and hope that they read it when they're awake. <laughs> yeah, because if we waited that. for every single one of us to be present every time, I did, we would get nothing done. Especially because Ralph spends so much time on his crack pipe. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Wow, I told you that in private, and now you're gonna share that with everyone on the internet. Oh, whoops. Uh, I guess you should probably edit that out. Can we talk about Jenkum? I know I mentioned it to you guys. Yeah, sure. Talk about it all you want. I'm sure. Say it again again slowly and make it clear what you're saying. I'm sure everybody would love to to hear about this. So we were talking about drugs earlier, and I told them about this concept (laughs) called Jenkum, which is you (laughs) shit. Say it again. Say it again. (laughs) Yeah, it's really sounded out here. (laughs) You shit and piss in a bottle, and you leave it there for a week. And then a week later, you come back to it, open the cap, and sniff it. <laughs> and it makes you pass out. What's, say, what's say it called again? again? Say, you want to you say... Jankum. Jankum? J-E-N-K-E-M. Jen. Jankum. Cum. Okay. Jen-cum. And I mentioned this because Jankum is our sponsor for the week. <laughs> Jankum. <laughs> yeah. Use your Sardonicast code. We're who's, selling. Who's we're selling Jankum. producing this? It's my Jankum. <laughs> we are. We're, my we're, Jankum. That's the name of the company. Jankum. And like really cool font, really cool neon font. It's like the Nerf logo, <laughs> except this is Jenkum on it. For a premium <laughs> price, you can buy horse Jenkum. Ooh, horse Jenkum. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, we can have different kinds of Jenkum. We can have rat Jenkum. We could have human oh, Jenkum. 
we could have. If you pay extra, Jenkum. you can get Ralph's Jenkum. Oh, yeah, and I'll sign it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but that's, what ce- that's what celebrities are going to do in the future when they need to, like, when they run out of money because they spell it, spend it all on drugs and hookers or whatever, they're going to like jank them in bottles. And you're like, you want William Shatner's jank him? And he signs it. And then you pay like $50,000 for it. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> so what do you want to talk about now? <laughs> Beat that. Well, uh, so I, I guess, well, okay. So this is episode one. We're, you know, we're kind of mm-hmm. fucking winging it. And so far... <laughs> it's it's a disaster, but uh, oh, yeah. you know, uh, but it's a fun it's a funny disaster, exactly. which is a theme. You know, that's the yeah, most important. Thing. As long as people can laugh at us, it's fine. Um, yeah. So I was. I guess I just wanted to explain that um, this is also a podcast. If you haven't noticed already, we kind of just got into it. Uh, this is also a podcast that uh, has has something to do with uh, movies. So we'll we'll be talking about movies a bunch because we. We are all familiar with movies, and we all do videos about movies. Um, yes, sir. And uh, so, yeah, I just uh, that 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 that's something that we'll talk about. Um, and into the uh, next discussion that we have listed, um, we're going to talk about the uh, plane flying over Ralph's house. And uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I the police car. Really. <laughs> if you guys, if you ever hear sirens or like. People yelling or like gunshots, that's coming from me. Yeah. Yeah, it's coming from the American. If you hear homeless people yelling at each other, that's definitely me. It's always me. This city is a shithole. Yeah. Well, um, so uh, yeah, we're, we, we, have, we have some movie related things we're going to talk about. Um, yes. One of them being uh, the Oscar nominations. And uh, so the Oscars are coming up. Um, mm-hmm. And. I guess I guess what I wanted to get from you guys is uh, what do you how do you feel about the current nominations and and what were your uh, favorite films of 2017 or least favorite what what do you feel was like snubbed we can just kind of get into this uh, so right now we have the best picture nominations um, we have Call Me by Your Name I thought it was awesome um, me too what are you gay I have nothing to add I haven't seen it <laughs> yep <laughs> are you some kind of what, some kind of fag like a gay movie? Yep. Ah, uh-huh. gross, dude. Uh, we have yeah, Darkest... I like a well-shot, well-acted movie. We have uh, <laughs> Darkest Hour, which I have not seen yet. Um, I had a ticket to it at TIFF, Toronto Film Festival, and um, I wound up missing it so I could see another movie that I wanted to see. I forget which one I missed it for. So I gave my tickets to uh, uh, Channel Criswell and uh, Louisa. Oh, yeah. And, oh, uh, really? Yeah, they saw it. Um, and they didn't like it. That's cool. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Uh, so I, has I, I anyone else seen it. it here? It, it strikes me as a grandpa movie, like my grandpa who loves yeah, war that's, movies that's and is English to... okay. really is excited for it, but I, I don't know. It yeah. seems to just be completely sold by Gary Oldman. I'll, I'll check it uh-huh. out before the Oscars happen. It's, it's exactly what you think it is. Yeah. You know, Gary Oldman's good and he does some speeches <laughs> and, and he's like, Man, people don't like Winston Churchill, but in the end, he gives a good speech and everyone rallies behind him. And then the movie Dunkirk happens, and it's like, yeah, you could just watch Dunkirk instead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Next, and, next, uh, uh, yeah, we have Dunkirk. <laughs> uh, oh, there you go. Yeah, so uh, Dunkirk Wonderful is nominated for Best Picture. Uh, you guys That's enjoyed good. that? I, I really enjoyed it. There, I very much enjoyed it. I have my criticisms with it, but mm-hmm. yeah, me too. I think that it was a like great movie. Overall, well, why don't you just watch my fucking quickie? Um, I did when it ooh. came out. I barely remember it though. Yeah, I mean, yeah, well, okay. gave it an eight out of ten. Yeah, the choice of presenting the film in the way that it did certainly makes it more unique. But yeah. I'm I fail to see any kind of point for that because I could have you know the film easily could have been Pulp Fiction or you know, mm-hmm. any any kind of film that has like chapters and be like, here's a chapter, here's a chapter, here's a chapter. I really, I, I didn't really see any point in presenting the film as a kind of like, oh, let's constantly be cutting back and forth between these, especially when they're in completely different uh, times from each other. 
So it would like yeah. cut to a completely different time of day and cu- cut back. It just felt like unnecessarily confusing in that sense. And obviously, you know, at a certain point, you understand what is happening. But it was just like I, 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 I didn't really get why that had to happen. Um, it's because Christopher Nolan loves time and timelines. Well, and, yeah, I mean, playing you around know, with that. that's what I was going to say. In he Memento, loves fucking with time in that way. In Memento, it worked very well and it was appropriate and it served a yeah. purpose, right? That's like, the best time he's yeah. done it. Yeah, I, I mm-hmm. that that it made perfect sense in the way that it was presented, and it was the movie, and especially like it was the whole film, uh, and especially because like it's it's not just like oh yeah it makes sense and it's easy to understand in in a way it's the fact that <laughs> there's murders going on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Ralph has. I hear it's, it outside. <laughs> yeah, it's the fact that um, it had so much purpose in terms of it being told like that in the first place. Like, the main character has a condition that it's not amnesia, but he has, like, a short-term memory loss. And so by presenting it in that way, then you are forcing the audience into the main character's head, in a a sense. Like, it's not a perfect sort of uh, replication of what he might be experiencing, but it helps. And it, it, it helps you to get into the character's head of this confusion and paranoia and, you know misunderstanding and i i just i that's one of my favorite examples of of presenting a film non-chronologically because it's it fits so well with the story they're trying to tell you know um nolan is obsessed with not using cg which is something i admire him for you know he tries to do everything practical as much as possible yeah in terms of that but th- this is the first time i noticed it kind of create a somewhat detrimental effect on the film in terms of the scope where mm. I never personally got the feel that there were what is it two hundred fifty thousand people yeah, on the beach three hundred thousand three hundred thousand by the way yeah um, I yeah I never got that sense to me mm. it seemed much more small scale than the actual event yeah um, which yeah that's kind of bothered me yeah. Um, yeah I completely agree with that the other criticism that I mentioned in my uh, review that I still feel is relevant is I think it's kind of bullshitty that he decided to present this war story in a very sugar-coated fashion in order to make the film PG-13. Yeah, yeah, that bothered me too. You could say like, oh, maybe this is just the film he wanted to make and it had nothing to do with it being PG-13. Okay, I don't believe you, but let's just go with that. Um, even in that instance, I mean, you, you are, you are really downplaying how the event vicious, took place, yeah. you know, like, I, I mean, like, it it's not, it's, it's one thing if you're going to have, um, atrocities play, take place off screen or out of frame or cheat the film in a way where your imagination makes up for it. That's that's something that one of my, well, my literally favorite director, uh, Mikhail Hanukkah, does, is he likes to have a lot of off-screen uh, violence and your imagination yeah. kind of fills in the blanks and it makes it even more real. But what Christopher Nolan did here, um, they weren't, it wasn't off-screen. It was very much on-screen. So it's, it's not left yeah. up to imagination. You see what's happening and all you see is like, wow. That's that's not what a grenade would do to people. It's not just going to kick up some dirt and like, ooh, no, somebody yeah. died. Yeah. It's like, gr- you know, the explosions like that rip people's limbs off, you know, like it. it, it that felt like a business decision. Yeah. Like, if you, I yeah, completely yeah. agree with you there. When Definitely. Michael Haneke does it, you know, he's obviously he doesn't give a shit how well the movie does. <laughs> so it's very purposeful when he does it. Oh yeah, uh, I don't remember yeah, the last I film can, he's made that's PG thirteen, if any. I don't think. <laughs> I don't think. I don't yeah. think ever. I don't think he considers um, the rating when he makes a film. Um, and yeah, I just that found being that, said, it wasn't it wasn't a big thing with Dunkirk for me because it was toward the beginning. It kind of bothered me when the when the missiles came down and the fucking guy just went flying up in the air. It didn't. No, it didn't. Ruin it didn't it. make the. It's movie mostly bad. about. It's a, mostly about how the paranoia of them being stuck on that beach kind of forced them on each other, like, you know, like they're rats just eating each other alive. It's more about that. It's more psychological. But yeah, I, I agree with you. I think it would have been much better if it was rated R. It was a minuscule amount of time in the film that that was even noticeable. But it is mm-hmm. something that I was like, okay, well, this could have been much better if you didn't do that. So, um... Yeah. Not a huge issue. Again, I gave it an 8 out of 10. 
which is a rare occurrence. So, um, yeah, still enjoy. Ralph, the film. didn't you, you say? Everything? Um, didn't you say upon rewatching it, not on the big screen, it's somewhat less effective. Yes, because I've got it. I've got it on cover. I I got it on um Blu-ray, but I haven't watched it again yet. Um. Oh yeah. Well, I got it Blu-ray 4K on a nice TV, and it's yeah. just not. It's, it's not. Just the not the same. same, is it? It really isn't. And that's the, interesting. I've always had what an issue with the sound mixer. What if your TV sucks? <laughs> yeah. No, it doesn't. <laughs> I promise you. Uh, did you guys have an issue with the sound mixing? Because that's only yes. my my really big issue. Is In that yes. I could barely hear most of the dialogue. You know what? The that dialogue sounded be... like they were talking in a toilet. That seems to be a thing for Christopher Nolan films now, and I don't know why. Yeah, that me, seems I don't to know. be like the same, same thing. thing. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it's specific mm-hmm. to Christopher Nolan films. Like, I don't know if he just keeps hiring the same guy or. That's crew what makes me think. I think it's or... an intentional choice. I think it's what he wants. Maybe oh, yeah. he likes. I've, that. I've listened to him talk about it, and he yeah, said, yeah. "Like, it sounds more realistic when you hear loud waves in the back, and you can barely hear the characters, because that makes it sound like it's really there." And by that same token, I'm like, that's bullshit, because <laughs> I can't fucking hear what anyone's saying. You know, yeah. okay, if you want to if you want to have that excuse for uh, Dunkirk, that's totally fine. But in Interstellar, it was the film's musical score that was, <laughs> yeah. that was drowning yeah. out. Yeah. I, I literally, like, I saw that movie in theaters, and there were points where, like, like I could only tell what they were saying because I was reading their lips. And like my friends next to me were like, "What the fuck?" And they would just whisper, "Like, what is he <laughs> yeah. saying?" And I'd have to, I'd have to like translate for them to just be like, "This is what my, uh, Michael, uh, oh, what is his name? Michael, Michael Caine. Caine. Michael Caine. Yeah. The soundtrack is just drowning him out." And I'm like, "Well, that yeah. doesn't really, that doesn't really improve realism, you know? That's that's a mixing issue. I don't know how you could call it something." Yeah, that's other when than the that. sound guy should put his foot down. And, and if say, you even no. want to bring up Dunkirk. I, I go to David Fincher immediately, where he has characters yelling their dialogue when they're in loud areas. Oh, I love it! And you can fucking hear them. Yeah, I mentioned or, that about. Did uh, you ever? Did you see Mind Hunter? Yeah, yeah, not Netflix yet. show. Not yet. There's yeah. there's a scene where two guys are in a club, and they he puts subtitles there because the oh, nice. club that's is awesome. so loud, and you can you can barely make out ah, what they're saying. That's so good. There. And and Chris Nolan doesn't do that. The characters are just talking, and it's like they're in a war zone. I've had that criticism so. with so many fucking movies, and it takes it it takes me out of the movie every time it happens. And I know that like most people would consider that to be very nitpicky. Um, and yeah. I think a lot of people's standards for what's nitpicky and isn't is a lot of the time due to what they notice and don't notice. So if I notice something yeah. that it doesn't, it bothers me, but nobody else, then all of a sudden it's a nitpick. And so <laughs> something something like. Um, you know, characters are in a club or um, a musical performance or any kind of environment or, uh, w- you know, a restaurant, anything that's supposed to be loud. And you can so clearly tell just by the way that they're talking uh, and the volume at which they're talking that um, the room was silent when they filmed it. The characters are essentially whispering yeah. to each other across the yeah. table and they add the background sounds later in post. And it's just like, oof. Like when you notice that it's it's so jarring, and um, yeah. you know, my issue with it is not like, like oh yeah, it's the biggest deal in the world. But my issue with it is it's so easy to fix. All it takes is a little bit of foresight. You can have a silent room and have the actors talking at a louder volume, so that when you bring in the um, the post audio, that it sounds natural. You know, it's like yeah. you, know, you have to imagine that the room is loud an easy fix. before you film it. And as long as you take that consideration, then that's something that's a non-issue. Like then, then you have everything working fine. As long as you have to, yeah. as long as you take the consideration beforehand. But holy crap, so many movies don't do that. And I mean, I guess a lot of people don't notice it right now. Um, now that you know, we have the I, internet. I think a lot of filmmakers are starting to do it. I, yeah. They always bring in in film school. They always bring up that social network scene with with um Justin Timberlake. And, yeah. and Mark in the in the bar, mm-hmm. and it's the blaring music. Yeah, it's so it, I it think makes people a lot of sense. are way more self conscious about it now. Over time, you know, people's standards for uh what they'll accept in film just keeps going up. You know, for yeah, you, which is a good thing. You used to, yeah, oh, of course, you know, like it. As long as people are more demanding for what they want out of a film, then films will continue to get better. And that's part of why I'm so critical of everything is because I feel like I feel like if more people were critical, then films would improve. You know, if everybody keeps yeah. accept, yep. accepting bo- bottom of the barrel bullshit or, you know, I, I, that's that's yeah. what they'll make, you know, then you get Valerian. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh wait, in in Valerian, did in in the Rihanna stripping scene, was yeah. the music loud? But with the did I don't the remember characters dialogue. <laughs> were they yelling? Was it like Fincher made it? I don't remember. The, 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 it was like a private like, showing. Like, yeah, so it was, was like it was quiet. literally just like three people in a room. <laughs> it wasn't even. Oh, it yeah, wasn't okay. even like a strip club. Next up, best picture nomination. We got Get Out. I thoroughly enjoyed that film. Me too. I don't think it deserves best. Yeah, we, yeah. I was gonna say. Do you think that when I'm just looking at that within that list, and I'm thinking I liked that film a lot, but I don't know if it's quite um, up to snuff with with the competition there. Well, especially over like say, Blade Runner, which is missing. Well, yeah. There. Okay. So we've got how many nominations uh-huh. total? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You know, I thought they had ten at one point. In 2010, they started having ten nominations. I thought I don't know why there's yeah, nine here. They did. All right. They okay. Well, then Blade Runner really got snubbed. Wow, why are there yeah. only... Mm-hmm. Let me count that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Darkest eight, Hour and Get nine. Out are the two there that um, yeah. kind of seem... I, think, I well, think Get Out's much better than Darkest Hour. I think... Well, okay, so we're going to... You know, next one next one up, I think Get Out's much better than Lady Bird. You know, I, en- I, enjoy, uh, yeah, I thought Lady I Bird was that. good. Not much better, but... But, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Get Out, I can understand being there because, you know, it, at least there's, you know, there's some social commentary... The uh, in the head kind of dream sequences were really, you know, creative and yeah. you know, very well shot. The acting's great. You know, there's a lot of really um, great qualities that Get Out has. Whereas I feel it's Lady, very unique. Lady Bird is just like a pleasant experience. Like Lady Bird's just like, that was good for me, at least. I know a lot of people yeah. are really overinflating that film but i I, lady lady birds it's a good fine like netflix movie you know yeah it's it's okay i describe it as it's like brooklyn it's a good building furniture movie like when you're building a desk or something and you put on a movie in the background yeah lady bird is a perfect perfect movie for yeah that's you know like kind of pay attention (laughs) and you're like oh i'm kind of keeping up with this i never thought about it that way um and (laughs) And <laughs> of course, now that oh, you I think about everything, well, when you say it like that, it kind of <laughs> makes perfect sense because Lady Bird, everything that you can get out of the film, you're essentially just getting from the dialogue anyway. Like it's a movie that you could listen to and pretty much get the same experience as watching it. Yeah. Um, mm. I, I I don't know why. Well, I kind of know why it's nominated for mm. best director. But I just personally yeah, feel I think we all know why I, we can get I, into that. Though. I personally feel like it's the direct the directing wasn't part of what made the movie good, you know. The directing yeah. it was, was mainly it was mainly the script and the acting. The directing was really passable and felt you know at times like you know it could have been just a TV movie. Like there was nothing about the filmmaking itself that that really made this film stand out. It was well written. For the most part, I have my gripes with the writing. Um, well, that one plot line with the yeah, uh, the, cool the, the cliche <laughs> thing. Yeah, no spoilers, but yeah, I mean, like if you've seen it, you'll know what we're talking about. The like, I want to fit in with the cool kids thing. Like that could have been thrown yeah. out of the script entirely, and <laughs> it wouldn't have made a bit of fucking difference. And well, then the movie would have been fifty minutes long, so they needed that in there. Nah, but they could have thought of something else. That didn't I mean, take really, up much Greta time. Gerwig couldn't think of anything. That that wasn't. You that, don't think so? That didn't really take up much time in the overall plot. I mean, like there were. I mean, I'm not talking about the whole thing of her and her dating different people. You know, that could have those those um, relationship scenes could have taken place without them being a part of this whole "I oh, want to yeah. fit in with the cool kids" thing, right? So you could, if you yeah. took out the element of the whole cool kids plot, which is one of the most cliched plot lines I've ever seen. Like every single fucking kids TV show has one episode <laughs> that it that is <laughs> yeah. focused on that shit, and and it's just so annoying to see it like in a feature film when it doesn't really add anything or do anything special to it. It's like, ugh, that could have just been taken out. Like I, I, it's so contrived and derivative and uninspired. But you know, for the most part, well written. Um, you know, good good characters. Um, I really like how they developed the relationship with Lady Bird and her mother, and you know the um the challenges that they've overcome, and how they justify their behavior and their relationship 
I I, I thought yeah, that, that they was, were the best part. Yeah, of the movie. They, there's there's some really good writing in this film, and I think Greta Gerwig did a great job with that. Um, yeah, best picture, even the fact that the they they always joke about like the mother and and a lady bird always talk about oh we hate each other but they don't really hate each other it's like how a mom and a stubborn little girl hate each other they always come back to the same you know and in the end they love each other like that scene where they're fucking picking out the dresses and they're arguing with uh, arguing with each other mm. and then they're like oh what do you think of this dress and then out of nowhere they're like oh it looks great the little moments like that that were just beautiful but um, Six out of ten. Yeah, I mean, like it. <laughs> it's not up to par with, with what I would. It's a good first film, you know. For from a directing yeah. standpoint, it's a, it's a really honestly like much better than a million. So, m- the majority of films out there, and the majority of first time films out there, it's a really, really great first attempt. And I still, it, it's a movie I would recommend either way, even if it wasn't a first first time film. Um, Have you but seen it's it, just, Alex? It's really. I haven't seen it. No, that's why I've been quiet. Uh. It's it's just a really. <laughs> it's not up to par with what I would consider, you know, best film of the year worthy. Um, yeah. And just for the nomination being there, that's fine. I'm not really, you know, a, apparently there's nine nominations this year. Um, <laughs> Blade Runner 2049 should have been the tenth, <laughs> but I yeah. guess it got snubbed a little. Mm-hmm. There was oh yeah, there you can see it in the trailer. There's a there's some there's some bad acting in Lady Bird also. There's some kind of shit acting at points. Um Are you referring to your favorite Lucas Hedges? I wasn't, but he I mean, you know, <laughs> he uh as soon as he's forced as he does fine the whole movie until his one of his characters last scenes where he needs to show some emotion and as and as soon as he's as soon as he's expected to show any kind of emotion and be like, "Oh, I'm crying now." <laughs> Then it's just like, oh, I cringe because he doesn't do a good job, and it's just I can't believe he's taken seriously as an actor. It's upsetting. Oh, I think he's fine. Um, but I mean, yeah. they had a problem with that other girl. The uh, well, well, her, she was also in um, her loser friend. Three billboards. Who? Her loser friend. No, no. The, there was like the scene where the loser friend and Lady Bird were eating those those the bread that they serve and uh, I don't remember. And there's this other girl that walks in. She's also in three billboards. I don't Fuck remember. If I know her name, but yeah, um, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, there's. I guess I could try to find. Um, it. There's. You can see in the trailer for Lady Bird. There's kind of a bad delivery of a line of the, um, the cashier saying, "Put it back," and it's just like, oof. It's one of those lines where <laughs> you can tell the actor is holding back so much. They were asked uh. to yell. And they didn't really give it their all. They were they're holding back their voice as they say it, and it's just like oof. You know, I always cringe whenever I see shit like that. And that's a moment where the director should say, "Do it again, and do it until you fucking get it." Let's stop talking about Lady Bird. Uh, we got <laughs> another Best Picture nomination. We got Phantom Thread. Ooh, Alex, you haven't seen that yet either, this have you? Movie. I haven't seen Phantom Thread or The Post. I've seen all the others. So. Is Phantom this Thread is a fucking masterpiece? Is Phantom masterpiece uh, not out yet? It in is the, uh... so good. I don't think I really it's out it. yet here. Or I might I have just come it. out. Where do we even start with this? It, literally everything is great about it. <laughs> it's well shot. It's not as everything. it's not as like spectacly in terms of its um, filmmaking and cinematography as some yeah. other Paul Thomas Anderson films. But at the same time, it doesn't really need to be. Um, no, it's very reserved and mature. I just, um. Like, yeah, I, perfect. Very well written, very very well acted. Uh, yeah. Really kind of fucked up in a delightful, playful way. Um, it's it's sweet at the same time. It's yeah. also disturbing. It's yeah, it's it's interesting. It's a perfect little mix. I'm glad you said disturbing because everybody was talking about how many times I said that in my 2015 video. They're like, take a shot of oh, yeah? <laughs> take, take a shot of Adam says <laughs> oh, disturbing. Yeah. You know what? I did note that while I was watching. Yeah. You know what? You, you kept saying it's like I record disturbing. that shit over the co- uh, over the course of like weeks, and so it's like I don't remember. Yeah, you know. I did the same thing on mine. I fucking kept saying. Um, yeah, there's some words. Wonderful. Anyway, mm-hmm. awesome PTA film. I would give it a nine out of ten. Uh, Me too. I don't expect it to win Best Picture at all. I don't. Either, I don't but... expect that. But at least, you what know, do you guys it's think there. is actually going to win? What do you think is the winner? Um, well, let's, let's go through all the rest of the nominations and we'll we'll say that. Okay. Yeah. The post I haven't seen yet. 
I could have. Me but either. I just, I just thought, either. you know what? It's a Steven Spielberg film, and it looks exactly like a Steven Spielberg film. So, mm-hmm. you know, he makes he boring. makes good, acceptable <laughs> movies at this point. But they, they, when's the last time he's made something like truly exceptional? You know. Uh, I'm trying to think. Schindler's List. Maybe remember. Catch Me If You Can. Catch Me If You Can. I think is pretty great. I only saw that's more. That's more. That's way more playful. Yeah, I prefer playful Spielberg to serious. Oscar beat Spielberg. Yeah, I enjoyed what I saw of Catch Me If You Can. If you can, uh, I only saw a little bit on TV, but I know I have to watch it. I've oh. heard very good things about it. Um, it's very, very good. Current Spielberg is really just kind of like, do you want to watch a movie that by the end of it you'll say that was all right and that was kind of good? Because I don't. Yeah, it's I just mean- <laughs> this thing when you got... They have there's so many talented people working on that movie, and they're all sleepwalking through it. But they're all talented anyway, so they end up making something good. I just there's yeah. just nothing exciting to me about watching a movie like that. I would it's like yeah, duh, it's good. It's all these talented people making a movie. I want to see two kinds of movies. I want to see exceptionally great films, and I want to see exceptionally terrible films. <laughs> you know, I don't I don't want to see movies that I just I forget about in a week. I want to I want to see some kind of exception. I want to see some kind of I want to be impressed in some way. And even if that's just yeah. being impressed with how, how bad it is, at least that's an experience, you know? Like I just Again, uh, none of us have seen the post, so we don't know. Yeah. But, you know. I'm just I'm just I'm we're explaining why we haven't seen it. Cuz you know, it's it's yeah. at a wide release. I'm sure we all could have seen it. I'm sure it's out in the U- mm-hmm. UK. So I've had many opportunities to see it. Yeah. And I was just like, nah, I'd rather stay home and jerk off. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't feel that motivated, if I'm honest. <laughs> okay. I'd rather stay home and sniff Jenkum. Yeah. yeah, man. Next yep. we got uh, Best Picture nomination, The Shape of Water. Mm. I enjoyed Another it. Another magnificent movie. Have you seen it yet, Alex? Alex. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it. Why don't, yeah. you, why don't, why don't you Alex talk about talk. it? You talk about yeah. it first, because yeah, I really, it. really enjoyed it. I thought it was, it, well, it wasn't quite... Pan's Labyrinth level. Of course. But I don't think anything um, he directs ever will be. No. But I, I just enjoyed how it's kind of on the nose in a lot of ways, but there's there's something just charming about it. There's just something about his directing and the way he just writes that I don't know, there's just something that really works about it. And it's so everything he makes feels like a fairy tale. And there's just something Not so everything. compelling about that. Okay, you know. Films of, of this of this ill. <laughs> <laughs> <Stupid shit. laughs> yeah, yeah. I forgot about a specific rim. Yeah. Not um, not everything, you know but I mean. this and Pan's Labyrinth very much both feel like fairy tale films. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's um, when he's at his strongest. You know what's what's crazy? Um, this ha- I I don't know. I, um, I guess I'm just going to ask you, Alex. What yeah. kind of budget do you think the film had? If you don't know already, um, I I wouldn't know off the top of my head. Um, what's what's your best guess? I'm going to guess like, the budget. I'm, I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess uh, 40, 45. Mm. Okay. I, I know how much it cost, too. It cost and I was damn 19.5 million. 19. Wow. Yeah. That guy. You want to hear something really, even more amazing? It looks like, it, it looks you know like a costs, $100 million movie. Yeah. You know? It does. You it know looks, what costs 45 million? Cloverfield Paradox. Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> My roommate told me that. that I, I couldn't even fucking That just says it all right. <laughs> Yeah, well, it just says if you if you have talent and you know what you're doing, you can make a movie for nothing. Ah, uh, man, yeah, Guillermo, he really figured out how to make it work, and he's so familiar with the process at this point that it's like I'm not even yeah. I'm not so surprised that he was able to do that, but I am still surprised that he pulled it off in that way, you know. Yeah. And um, yeah, it looks so good. What was the, the creature looks amazing. Oh yeah, yeah it the, does. The period, the, just the way he captured the period, and there's no, it's seamless. It's completely seamless. You know, only like a master like him could do that. For what for what the film looks like in the final product, it seems like it seems like at least a hundred million dollar movie. Um, and it has such a grand scope. Oh it's yeah, about so much, there's so many characters. And yeah, it has a lot it's going on. Damn impressive. It do, you do not yeah. feel at any point in this film that they were you know, pinching pennies or anything. Like, there's no yeah. part about it uh-huh. that feels like they they were um, working on a budget with restrictions. It felt like they had all the yeah. money in the world. Um, 
All the Money in the World. Not oh. not nominated Speaking for Best Picture. Speaking of, <laughs> no, it's not. Oh, nominated. Yeah, it's okay. Not. I thought it was. Uh, no. Oh, uh, that would have been a great lead-in. Holy shit! <laughs> would have been a bad. great segue. Uh, yeah. Sorry. I bet. I bet. Um, who directed it? What's his face? What's his name? Alien oh, director. God. Uh, Ridley. Ridley. Ridley Scott. I bet he's super disappointed not to get a Best Picture nom because I think I think that was his whole thing by recasting uh, Christopher Plummer as the Kevin Spacey. Yeah. Was he was like, ah, oh, fuck, I won't get an award now. And so he replaces <laughs> Kevin Spacey <laughs> with Christopher Plummer. I haven't seen it yet, but I'll see it before the Oscars anyway, because it's nominated for something else. I think Christopher Plummer is actually nominated for uh, mm-hmm. uh, supporting. Yeah, he is. Um, yeah, Shape of Water. It's, uh, you know, it's crazy that we live at a time where a uh, YIF fan fiction can be nominated for Best Picture. <laughs> Very furry. <laughs> she, uh, yeah. I mean, it's a love story yeah. between uh, can be done. a mute woman and a fish man. And I'm just, you know, it's so, it, we're so progressive now that. Too true. We should give ourselves a round of applause. Woo! We did it, everybody. We did it. We've got, we've where, got. Where is yif- that to even go from here? Yiff at the Oscars. You're almost working everybody. on a Jenka movie now. Yiff at the Oscars. And the last nomination we got here. Uh, for best picture is three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri, and you know what? I fucking loved it, and I've been getting a lot of uh, pushback for loving it so really? hard because really? there's a lot, really? a lot of fucking people are really quick to be calling this film out, and a lot of the criticisms that people have, um, a lot. Uh, there's a really popular criticism that the film didn't handle racism in the right way. I'm like, well. I don't know. See, when I watch a movie, I'm not like I'm not going to base my rating on how they handled the politics. You know, I I just Mm -hmm. I find that completely uh, irrelevant to the quality of the film. If if, let's say the film is putting its politics above the actual filmmaking, like if the agenda of what they're trying to say supersedes the characters then I'm going to have an issue because it's going to detract away from the actual filmmaking. But in this film, it's like, you can have whatever political message you want. I don't care. And even if you... I don't really feel like it was like ham-fisted or anything. Some people do. But the politics matters less to me than the filmmaking itself. Like, I want I want to be thinking yeah. about the filmmaking. Uh, what did you guys think? Especially in, in this movie. It, it didn't really... And then the other that's criticism... That's not really what it's about. I mean, it's partly there. That That's a lot of people's criticism, and apparently that just ruins the movie for some people, but... Uh, the other wow. criticism I keep hearing is CG deer. Um, okay, <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, I, that, like that. If you that bugged me a little. I mean, yeah, there's there's very minor things that are wrong with this movie that I you know I said in my review it's not a perfect movie. Um, yeah, and there are some things that you know could have been done better. Also. What's his face? Lucas Hedges. Yeah. Hey. Easily the worst part of the film was Lucas Hedges, but at this point, I'm just like, I'm not going to let he's, you he's ruin He's barely this even in me. it, though. I barely even noticed. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's why. I didn't even think he was that if bad. If he was like a main character, if he was like a, a super prominent character, then it probably would have affected my experience more. But otherwise, at this point, I, I'm just like, I, I'm not going to let you. <laughs> I'm not going to let you have this power over me, Lucas Hedges. <laughs> yeah. It didn't ruin the movie and I I gave the movie it was the highest rated movie for me of 2017 for me personally yeah. because he wasn't in it very much, but the scenes that he was in it where he's like cl- slamming the door like really half-assedly and you know how I was talking about the the cashier and ladybird that like held back kind of anger that's exactly what he does that's exactly what he does the entire fucking time in three billboards is he's expected on paper from the script to be able to show that kind of emotion and he doesn't commit to it he's he's holding back the entire fucking time and it pisses me off anyway what's going to win um do you want the cynical answer or like what I actually think go for the, the cynical answer, answer first? Uh, I think Lady Bird's gonna win because it's the year of women and it has a woman in it. And it's um, mm. <laughs> but I I pick three billboards myself. Well, I would pick Good Time. Good Time is that was a snubbed. masterpiece, but that was fucking snubbed. That was completely yeah, was zero snubbed. nomination. And I figured it would be. I, I thought he'd get nominated for actor at least. I thought Acting? the same thing. Robert Pattinson did it like that was the best th- performance I've ever seen from him. 
I think like that yeah. was that was an amazing performance. I th- you know Brilliant there's movie. at least three or four nominations that it should have gotten. Best picture uh-huh. that would have been nice, although I wouldn't have expected that. Best actor uh-huh. totally had room for hit for Robert Pattinson as best actor. Um, best supporting best actor, supporting actor, supporting like actress. Benny Benny Safdie. Even the guy they meet halfway through the movie that just comes out of nowhere. He's great. Yeah, I don't know his name. Yeah, I don't. I don't I know his, his name's name. Guy. In the movie. Um, guy, really good. Yeah, good time is probably time. you know I might not consider it to be the best film of the year in terms of all factors considered, but it it is my mm-hmm. favorite film of the year in terms of how bad I want to watch it after I've watched it already. I've seen that movie four yeah, times it's... already. I'm not even kidding. That's, wow, that's really. That's, wow. I I. Every once in a while, there'll be a movie that I just see like three times in theaters just because I want to show other people. And then I watched it again on Blu-ray. I gave it to somebody for Christmas and watched it again. I've, yeah. I've literally I've, seen, I've it seen it four times. I've seen it three or it's, four it's times, awesome. too. Yeah, it's... I've seen it four times, and it's, it's, such a it's fun, endlessly rewatchable, fun which is movie. shocking. It is, it's, you know, it's yeah. such a good time. Yeah. Mm. That's... Boo. <laughs> um, nice one. So I... Alex, did you say what you uh, thought would win? Um, I'm torn. I I have a feeling, even though I haven't seen it, I think Phantom Threads is going to win. Just no. from the buzz mm. around it, I, it's, I it's not going to win. I don't think so. It's not going to win. I uh, yeah. Mm. Three billboards, Ladybird. Those are the. It's those are the two. yeah. Um, I think Three Billboards has a shot. I know that there's a lot of pushback on it from. A lot of like you know article journalists and yeah, pe- yeah. people on the, the internet hats. and yeah. Um, although I'm not sure that the academy would a be aware of those or b really take that into consideration as much. See, I think they do because yeah, I, think I mean last year well. with Moonlight, I'm not going to argue Moonlight La La Land's a better movie. I-, I think La La Land's a better movie personally, but I, I think there was a lot of pushback on La La Land. And because of that, they were like, all right, Moonlight. Maybe. I mean, you know. I, that's what I think anyway. I just. But Moonlight's an excellent movie, so I yeah, don't Yeah, Moonlight, have a problem th- they're it, both obviously. great. <laughs> I gave them the same rating. I would have. You know, I ha- I'm happy either way. They're both great movies. I would have preferred La La Land as, like, the better film. Um, yeah. I'm sincerely hoping that, you know, who, who the fuck knows, but I'm sincerely hoping that politics didn't play in too much to the uh winner last year although who knows really (laughs) um because you know when you open that door and when you say like okay we're gonna choose a political like oh yeah this will be our black gay movie (laughs) um so that everybody can be happy i i'm just i'm concerned that you know next the, the year after a film like call me by your name that could win best picture but i'm worried that you know, they might think, mm, now we had the gay movie last year sort of thing. You know, when you open that door, then it's like, OK, well, are you really choosing the best film of the year anymore or what you think the best film of the year is? Or are you, you know, just playing a political game? I, and like I think in Oscars, some ways they probably yeah, that's, do that. That's, that's my main issue like with them. Haven't they? They've uh-huh. always been a bit. Even the year with Spotlight, the year Spotlight one. That was very. Spotlight so more forgettable. Than... Spotlight's a fine movie. It's all, but... it's all right. I mean. <laughs> there were so many other movies. Oh yeah, Spotlight was completely undeserved for Best Picture. But anyway, did that come out twenty fifteen? Yeah. <laughs> oh, and you didn't put it on your list. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't think it Ooh, was list worthy. That's spicy. It's not that's really. Spicy. I just the soundtrack fucking sucked. <laughs> the soundtrack was awful. That was and it was I there the whole fucking time. There's. I saw a parody of Spotlight, and it's just a guy running around with papers all around Boston. Yeah, and it's that. It just felt minutes. like a, a largely great. like it, that's some. It felt like the film was using um, its subject matter as a crutch to appear more important than it actually was, and that a lot of people wound up loving the film because it's like, oh yes, I completely agree with the politics behind this film. I this is this is an important movie because of the subject matter. When I would rather have people talking about the filmmaking, you know, I would rather have people talking about the acting or the the musical composition or the cinematography. You know, otherwise, what's the fucking point about the Oscars? Are you going to is that, you know, is this best picture or is this most important political theme? You yeah, know, I can yeah. see that. What are your thoughts, Alex, as a British man? What on spotlight? <laughs> um, on I, anything. <laughs> oh, on anything. Well, <laughs> yeah, the political state of Bosnia is an interesting one to go into. If oh, we, if we have time. 
Yeah, let's let's do it. No, move on. <laughs> um, well, I okay. didn't. I well, I, I didn't really get to uh, my what I thought would win. Um, so I'll oh. just say that real quick. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> three billboards has a shot. Call me by your name. I think has a shot. Um, I'm hoping that it's not Get Out or Lady Bird or The Post or Darkest Hour, even though I haven't seen those two, but I haven't, you know, I've seen Get Out and Lady Bird. They just seem like not as up Ralph to par Cynical as the, the other ones that is, I've seen. Is what's going to win. No, I don't think Lady Bird's going to win Best Picture. I think that she has a very Damn. good shot at winning Best Director, though. Oh, mm. no. I don't think she has a chance at winning Best she Director. She might. I think they just nominated... A lot of people made a big stir in the Golden Globes that women weren't nominated, so they nominated her. But I don't think she has a chance of winning. I think Guillermo's going to Maybe. Win. I think she might win Best Screenplay. Yeah, I can totally see Best Screenplay. Yeah. And that would be much deserved. But I can also see Three, three Billboards winning that. Yeah. Yeah, Three Billboards does I think if Lady Bird wins screenplay. Best Screenplay, then Three Billboards is definitely going to win Best yeah. Picture. Yeah. There, I just have... Yeah. Lady Bird, Call Me By Your Name, and Three Billboards... I think The Shape of Water might have a shot at being Best Picture. Really? Um, really? Yeah. That's interesting. I mean, I wouldn't consider it as such because, like, you have to think about... I don't really even know how the Best Picture winners are decided if it's, like, a tiered ranked voting system, if they, like, you yeah. know, assign certain numbers to them and then just add them up. But it's, like, it, you know, The Shape of Water is a very easily um, accessible film, and it's something that I'd imagine the Academy would all like. Um, mm -hmm. and yeah, I mean, it's, it's a very like non-controversial kind of, kind of win. Uh, the that's how I feel about Lady Bird though. Okay. Well, I think Shape of Water will win all the technical stuff. Um, uh, maybe but not except for cinematography. Yeah. We are going to, uh, segue into another, uh, part of this podcast. So essentially, um, the Oscar nominations were just something new we could talk about. We, we could be talking about anything for the first bit of the podcast. Doesn't necessarily need to be movie related. But there is a section of the podcast that we're about to get into right now uh, that is uh, going to be consistently movie related. Essentially, uh, every podcast uh, that, we, that we record, there will be a new single film that we discuss, that we've all seen. And at the end of the podcast, um, one of us will be recommending a film to be discussed for the next episode. So we're recording once every two weeks. So everybody will have two weeks to watch the film. So if you want to at home, be a part of the discussion yourself and watch the film, introduce yourself to something new or maybe something you've seen before and give yourself a refresher. Um, we'll all be talking about a predetermined film for the week after that we'll discuss at the end of the episode. So for this episode, um, we were thinking about what to talk about. And uh, apparently all three of us just happened to watch the new Cloverfield Paradox film last night. <laughs> Masterpiece. <laughs> Completely unplanned. It's called, I've it's already called I think it's uh -huh. called The Cloverfield Paradox. Yeah, it is. It is. Right. It is. The yeah. Cloverfield Paradox, which showed up out of nowhere and we just all happened to see it. So we might as well fucking talk about this one because, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. there was no, uh, we didn't have anything uh, to be recommended in episode negative one or zero. Yeah. So, um yeah, why don't uh, why now, don't you now before we talk about this one? Do you want to recommend next uh, two weeks from now? The next no, that'll that'll be at the end movie? of the podcast. Ah, oh, okay. We talked okay. about this. We did. You forgot. Yeah, Ralph, you damn idiot. Dude, you... I'm always on drugs. I don't know. <laughs> Too much Jenkum. Too much Jenkum. <laughs> God. So who wants to talk about um, this? Let's let, shit first. let's let Alex talk about this because we had the majority yeah. of this yeah. discussion in the Oscars thing. So it's fresh in my mind because I watched it today. Oh yeah. Oh no. Um, oh boy. So what's it called again? I've already forgotten. The Cloverfield. The Cloverfield paradox. paradox. Oh, yes. Cloverfield paradigm is. Uh, oh by, wait wait wait. <laughs> Before you get into it, I should I should I should announce that we're gonna <laughs> this is gonna be a spoiler discussion. So if nobody wants spoilers oh, yeah. for this film for any reason, um, there will be a timestamp posted in. The description, however you're watching this, we're going to start on YouTube. We'll probably upload iTunes and Spotify or something, but we're going to start for YouTube and just see what the fuck happens. But there will be a timestamp in the description if you want to skip the spoiler discussion. So if you want to watch the film first, either like pause it or skip this part and come back to it or whatever, uh, the film, the designated film discussion sections are all going to be spoiler talks. So before we ever get into this section, we should just mention spoilers, yeah. the Cloverfield Paradox. Continue. Spoilers. So the Cloverfield paradigm, 
paradox, whatever it's called, is great comedy <laughs> set in the Cloverfield universe, <laughs> uh, which like is this horrible mis- mishmash of story ideas that kind of only exist to combine the previous two Cloverfield movies. Um, the story is about this... <laughs> the world is like run out. It's just the story of that video game Dead Space, pretty much. Um, yeah. Like the world is run out of resources, but the there's one crew that can go into space, and if they d- succeed in their mission, they'll have infinite energy, and everything will be awesome. But uh, things go wrong along the way, and the other dimensions oh, no. are involved. And yeah, um, and things quickly devolve into nonsense that makes you laugh out loud because it's so ridiculous. Uh. One more thing. Spoiler warning for the previous two Cloverfield films. Also, we're going to. Oh yes. We're gonna. We we are forced to have spoil to. all three Cloverfield films. So just getting that out there. If you don't want those spoiled, then. Let, let's just say the first. I think the first two are very good. I like. Um. Well, I haven't seen the first one in a long time, but the whatever the other one was called. Ten, I like uh, that one. Cloverfield Lane. I like that one up until the like last ten minutes. You know what? Yeah. I'm not sure if you're fucking aware of this, but the last ten minutes were not in the original script. There was an yeah, entire fucking that. movie that was made, or sorry, not made. Um, there was an entire script that was written, an entire concept, and it was just c- supposed to be called like the Cellar or something, like some yeah. some comp- nothing to do with Cloverfield. J.J. Abrams picked it up, was like, "Hey, you wanna you wanna be successful in Hollywood, right, kid? Well, no yeah. one's gonna give you any fucking money except me, and the only way I'm gonna do that is if your movie's shit now. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna take this." I'm going to shit all over it, and then you can have your movie. <laughs> you want to you make it in Hollywood, don't you, kid? That's how I imagine the conversation went anyway. Uh, uh-huh. I, think, I think he talks I like, like that. I like the idea of using Cloverfield as the springboard for like science fiction stories yeah. and cinema. I, you know, but like, I know. That's what to, I thought it was supposed to be. I really like, fucking don't. Because 10 Cloverfield Lane has nothing to do with Cloverfield. Aside from it the literally fact does that there's not. aliens in it. So they, they literally yeah. just... It's not even the monster from the first Cloverfield. No, it's but not. But then this one acts as if both of them exist in the same universe. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> the 10 Cloverfield Lane, it, it's... They just they added in that slusho shot at the gas station or whatever. It's like they just yeah. threw uh-huh. that in there. It's like, oh, slusho, remember that brand from the yeah, first Cloverfield? And then... At the end, just the car driving away and hits the fucking mailbox and it says 10 Cloverfield laying on it. It's like, okay, those are the only things that connected. And then like the monsters, they could have been monsters from another movie, even with that 10 minutes in the the end of the movie. Like that really, that still didn't really have anything to do with the first Cloverfield. Yeah, it didn't. It really didn't. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it pissed me off because there is so much fucking substance to the movie without it having anything to do with Cloverfield that I wish I just saw the real movie, you know? Me too. I mean, the advantage is though, you can kind of just shut off the movie before the last 10 minutes and you got a really good movie. Yeah. That's not a advantage. This new one has because the Mm -hmm. whole movie is fucking terrible. You can't cut (laughs) out anything. This is true. Can we just start with the opening scene and how it felt like they shot the whole movie and then they were like, we need a scene F- That's the kind of scene you have character. an hour in to a movie. Like, <laughs> minutes in, and it's like, what the fuck is going on? The like, first what, shot of this movie people? is like a handheld outside of the car, and it's just some woman walks into a car. You're like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> and the color grading is so bad, and the scene itself, the dialogue is like, oh, ba 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 ba, just regurgitating <laughs> exposition. And then you go to outer space, and you're like, what the fuck is this now? It's like a different movie. You know, the that that entire scene was just so cancerous incredibly cancerous it was just because like it, it was like it was like birdemic levels of of exposition delivery where it's like it you, really was there was My no was a room for any any semblance of realism or character growth like what they thought was character growth was oh so she has a husband oh look she misses her family look at look at what the video she's looking at out the window of the spaceship look she's a related <laughs> She's a that relatable scene char- too. <laughs> yeah, she's a relatable yeah. character now. Do, do, can't you tell she has a family? You have a family at home, right? Wow, can't you relate to mm-hmm. this character? Fuck. Yeah. Do you but guys so love anyway, Alex. tone deaf as well? Like Yeah. The, one thing that really stood out to me was the incredibly strangely like placed humor. I don't know if you guys really noticed that, but oh, there's totally. this one character who's <laughs> supposed to be like he's just from like a sitcom who's just in there who who, who uh-huh. laughs and jokes about everything. While everyone else is being serious, that was bloody weird. 
And like, is it supposed to be a horror film? Is it supposed to be an action film? Like, what is this even supposed to be? What is the, what is it? Is it a drama? Is it just supposed from to be alien? I, is it from what I heard? There were lots of rewrites while the movie was going on. Oh really? I, I mean, it's abundantly clear. Not surprising. And, yeah, not at all. And I feel like they, there was this whole space movie, and then they just added in this this boyfriend character and all his shit on Earth. It feels like a totally different movie. Did you guys notice? how literally nobody in the film said the word Cloverfield except people on the intercom radio thing. Yes. So like, it, it literally, <laughs> there, there was the newscaster and he's like, this is going to be the Cloverfield paradox or whatever the fuck he was saying. Yeah. It's, it like, seems as though that was strange. added in after the movie was filmed. And that yep. like, the the shot of the slusho uh, bobblehead in this film, that's such an easy uh, additional shot. You, you can just film that at yeah. any point. There was nothing else in the shot that really related to anything. I mean, there was no actors in it. Yeah, it was just I, I a missed shot that. of the bobblehead. Literally just a bobblehead of the I was like, what? Um, Why was there a bobblehead all of a did sudden? You guys, uh, did you guys notice how they um, they continued the uh, title credits motif from the uh, uh, 10 Cloverfield Lane? I don't know if that's... Yeah. The, yeah. With, yeah. with the lines yeah, it was. or whatever? Yeah, yeah the lines. Except but, it doesn't fit. Well, yeah, because 10 Cloverfield Lane was the first instant. It wasn't in the first Cloverfield. But when they used no. it in 10 Cloverfield Lane, it was supposed to symbolize the uh, the underground bunker to, yeah. to like, yeah, give yeah. depth. It, it was genius. It was to give depth to the to the setting and the film and the, and the themes, right? Uh -huh. And then they did that in this film... And I'm, I'm like, you guys realize that it, there's, <laughs> there's nothing about this film that justifies that, and you're literally just grasping at straws to try and make a connection to the other films in the franchise, right? They literally don't understand what makes a movie good. Well, that line. Anything. You're talking about the line going from. The... Yeah, the line. You can yeah. see it in the in the poster and the. Yeah, yeah. I guess I, I like guess, some of the uh, lines are going up now, so it's like, oh, we're in space. I guess they're trying to do the because <laughs> yeah, one's going, one's going, going down, down one's going up. Mm -hmm. I guess it was supposed yeah. to be the two dimensions like mirroring each it other. It really doesn't fit as well. I mean, no, it, ser yeah, it serves it's so much more purpose in in Ten Cloverfield Lane. Yeah, it was just to fit in. Yeah, um, really lame. Did yeah, you find the, the opening um, credits? Oh god, there's so much to talk about. We're all fucking like. <laughs> there's, there's a certain thing that's really like that just made me scream of laughter because I just wasn't Good. expecting it. Unintentional humor, be it um, you know, they've got the football game thing do you remember the shot where it zooms in on like one of the football characters oh, and the, it just starts spinning out of nowhere the foosball oh, like, so, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah that was hilarious yeah. i found that so yeah. funny i was like are the demons like, playing nothing ever came of that the demons are playing foosball yeah and it was like that was so, so weird. inconsistent in terms of that kind of thing like and and then how, how, nothing makes any sense. Like, why do, <laughs> things just start happening? Like, why do why are worms just put inside that guy? The oh, why does God. that guy's arm just disappear in the wall? The what? the the I, it it wasn't like demons. It was like sorry, that was my doorbell. Ooh, um, I'm nice. not getting it. I have roommates. Uh, it wasn't demons. It was you know it was like what was it? it like the other the, the two dimensions time are like warp, and so like yeah, it almost. I don't know, because the way that they explained it in the film was like, oh, yeah, we tried to quantum entanglement, blah, blah, blah. And now it's like the two universes are like, wow, we, we can't both exist simultaneously, blah, blah, blah. But then it's like, yeah, the way that characters die in this film also one at a time, just conveniently whenever they need to. It mm -hmm. just seems like mm -hmm. the universe just doesn't like them. And, yeah, and they yeah. just die just because it's their turn to die. Like, the guy gets his arm sucked into the wall, and he loses his arm or whatever. And f for the rest and of the film, I'm, th funny. I'm just thinking, like, there's no is no one concerned that that could happen again? Like, no one's ever... Like, <laughs> yeah. I, is, are you guys just okay with that hap having happened once and just thinking, like, yeah, that was weird and let's move on with our day? Like, I mean, I would... The, the script needed them everything to die. What about I, the fucking guy? He's he's um it's it's the black dude. He goes into the thing and he closes the door and locks it. He's like, this door needs to be locked in order for the thing to work. And then he goes the off into space and dies. Yeah, the sacrifice. And it's the like, why sacrifice. do you have to lock the door? What does that even? That was just yeah. like I, I, I knew that was coming. All of these space movies have to have the heroic sacrifice. It moment. had every cliche, even just in terms of sci-fi. Oh content. yeah, got, like, yeah. Parallel, parallel universes, uh, dude. people and walls, uh, monsters, uh, worms. Hey, have you seen Alien? 
Yeah, it's just a Alien? mix of all this shit. And it takes none of the good stuff from any of these sci-fi movies, oh, yeah. just the bad stuff. <laughs> this is, like, if if you've ever seen a sci-fi trope ever, it's in this film. Mm -hmm. Every Absolutely. single fucking sci-fi movie trope, all the way up to the, oh, I gotta do this by myself, the computer needs a person to manually blah blah blah, I guess I, guess, <laughs> yeah, that I, gotta, <laughs> I gotta sacrifice myself, you go that way. And then she said something like, no, I can actually do it remotely. He's like, no, don't worry about, like, they just brushed it off, like. Go off without yeah. me. That, yeah, that's every single fucking trope and cliche that's ever existed in a space horror film is in this movie. And I thought... The, I thought the jump the, scare. I thought... The, <laughs> the I, woman in the wall, and you hear, like, this monster ah! screeching, and you're like, what is that? Except and it's it only, wasn't her, like, yeah. briefly. Yeah, all the sound cuts out, and the woman puts her head to the wall, and you hear... Rah! It's like, why is this woman only screaming, like, a little bit every once in a while to scare <laughs> the audience, and not just consistently? She has fucking wires running through her whole body. I thought that the most cliched space horror movie I'd ever seen would be Life from 2017. I was about to bring that up. Uh, and yet yeah, somehow it felt like this film was even derivative of that. Somehow. It's like a it's like a watered down version of a watered down science fiction movie. It's the it's most like watered down. It's like Inception. It's the most watered down and derivative and uninspired a science fiction film could possibly be. And they decided this would work great for the Cloverfield universe. <laughs> That's the best part. Oh, yeah. Well, it's all the parallels with what the tie ins with Cloverfield. You know what, though? In a way, what? it was a smart business decision because you have this property, and the original title of the film was supposed to be The God Particle. Think about mm, it. Yeah. No one would have fucking seen this movie unless yeah. it said Cloverfield. Yeah. They like literally nobody would have fucking seen it, and all of a sudden you just attach Cloverfield on the front of it, just like, uh, yeah, this is the Cloverfield universe. We'll have some for some answered questions, guys. I'm J.J. Abrams. I've made a career off of blue balling people. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't even know about that because this movie's so bad that they saw it and went, no one's gonna see this in a theater. So let's fucking sell it to Netflix and just throw it on on a Monday. <laughs> Literally. And just have people watch it that way. That's it's, how bad it was. You know, <laughs> I don't even understand how they sold it. Because what science fiction concept is in this movie <laughs> that like a producer went, wow, that's really interesting. We have to make this movie. Because there's nothing. There's, not so, there's nothing original or intense or creative about a single thing in this movie. It is, it, you <laughs> know, the, the Cloverfield films have some of the most interesting marketing I've ever seen. And mm -hmm. all the way up from the original, I don't know if you guys were, I don't know how old you guys were when the original came out. Um, but oh, I, I was like 12. Okay. I, I love the marketing. I, um, I was totally on board when it, the marketing. Oh, dude, I was so fucking obsessed with um, the whole mystery behind the first film. Essentially, they released mm -hmm. uh, Cloverfield 2008. They released a, a trailer, um, found footage. Um, it, it was at a point in time where found footage hadn't been beaten to death um yeah it was not in the uh like horror film found footage uh cancer explosion that happened shortly after um yeah and so they released this trailer people at a party there's clearly some sort of you know end of the world thing happening shit flying into buildings the fucking head of the statue of liberty like falling into the street and like oh my god and just like from these little tiny clues that they left in the trailer of people saying like there was this huge discussion online of people debating um what people were saying in the trailer and uh somebody said uh it's alive it's huge and there were actually people that were like um no they he said it's a lion it's huge the monster's a big lion i know like so people <laughs> there, there is this whole online discussion over like what the monster would be and the trailer yeah, never they showed. would pause they would they would pause the trailer and like oh yeah circle the frame monster by frame. in the background it was genius yeah. genius marketing and and they didn't even say the title of the movie in the oh trailer. yeah oh yeah that too it was it was absolutely genius marketing, some of the best marketing I've, I've ever seen, and mm -hmm. um, and so you know, not showing the monster, not even technically making it obvious that there was a monster at all. When I first watched the trailer, I thought like, oh, like you know, meteors or something. Like I don't know, like some end. Of, it's an end of the world scenario for sure, but it could have just been like a Roland Emmerich natural disaster kind of thing. I don't know, yeah. but um, yeah, people figured out that there was a monster, and there was this huge online debate over what the monster was, and and like um, all this discussion going down on like the IMDb discussion boards. Rest in peace. 
Um, <laughs> and and they had websites made for the company Slusho. Um, and so people were scavenging these websites for clues that literally ultimately led nowhere. But there was so much yeah. of a fucking hype train behind this movie. I remember I saw it in theaters the day it came out. And um, as soon as the trailers ended and it was quiet, like right before the opening title, some guy was like, it's a giant snake. <laughs> like, like just <laughs> as though they were like calling what the movie was supposed to or what, what the what the monster was supposed to be. It was so funny. And I mean, like, yeah. Ultimately, the movie is fine. It's good. It's it's not. I, I, I mean, really love it. it there's like, I I loved it a lot more when I was younger than I do now. There's parts of it that like mm-hmm. kind of piss me off and are annoying at this point as I'm older. Oh, yeah. But it's still you know a passable, fun, exhilarating, found footage film. But the marketing behind it is like the most notable feature, I think. And yeah. so it's funny that they've continued this marketing trend across all of these different Cloverfield films and the quality of the films. I mean, 10 Cloverfield Lane was great. The last 10 minutes sucked, but this film is just like, mm-hmm. this is this is garbage. This is fucking garbage. It, it really is. Can we talk about the final shot of the film? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the best part. <laughs> we can talk I about was, I, everything. I rewinded it because I was like, did I just see what I, what I just saw? I, I, I was just so dumbfounded by what I'd seen. Like, I'd, it just came out of nowhere and it's like, what? Is that a reveal? Is that supposed to be like a surprise? We it saw it nothing. earlier. Like, well, it, yeah, it meant nothing. And then the film ends and it's like, what, what, what does that mean? <laughs> You've just <laughs> opened a whole other avenue of storytelling with this, uh-huh. this, what happened just here. And you end it there. You know, what are you doing? And it's not even like, oh, what's going to happen now? It's like a, so what? So, yeah. so what that happened? What, <laughs> how is that going to impact anything? What is that? <laughs> yeah. Why do I give a shit? The great. So, so everything meant nothing then. Okay, so, great. Basically, yeah. you have a movie. You have the God Particle. Somebody decides we're gonna attach. We're gonna make this a Cloverfield movie. But in doing so, as soon as as soon as you create these other scenes and ideas, where it's like there are monsters on the ground and Earth and the invasion and holy fuck, all this action happening. By the end of the film, it's abundantly clear that there were more interesting things going on than the film that we watched. That. Yeah. Absolutely. There was there's an entire story that you revealed to have been happening on Earth or elsewhere, and you chose to give us the product of the least interesting characters and sequence of <laughs> events out of the whole event that happened. You you revealed mm-hmm. to us that there are things happening that we would have probably enjoyed watching, but instead you gave us this this bullshit. You know? The characters are so bad. Every single one of them. I, I think God, the fucking Russian guy. <laughs> They're like they, ha- they have the Russian and the German facing off against each other. Like, no, oh, it's like an allegory. Did like you- how smart we are. Oh my God, was it? It's just stunk. Did you like how there was a character that only spoke in Mandarin but could understand everybody speaking English and everybody could understand her? Yeah. So it's yeah. like, why are and they you would not- they would switch between languages halfway through sentences? I'm like, why the yeah, fuck is this even in here? It's that was a little odd. Um, this is. <laughs> I, perhaps they're planning on releasing it in theaters in China. Maybe, Maybe. that's yeah, like, I, I know what I didn't even think about that. That's, that's a common theme for films nowadays is like, how do we market to China? It's a huge market. Let's make the movie dumb. Fuck Kung Fu Panda, you know? I mean, yeah. it's doing well in China. Can we talk about, can we talk about the visual effects um, that, that look like they're out of, they're from 2002? <laughs> yes, we can. Although <laughs> I, I swear to God, I swear to God, some of them are 480p. <laughs> They were like blurry. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> it did look yeah, really bad. It didn't. The Cloverfield monster at the end looked like it had no bones. In it. it just looked like flesh. It was so bad. <laughs> yeah, it certainly wasn't an improvement from like the 2008 film. No, no. you know, I think the 2008 movie looks pretty damn good, especially for the time. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, more of the sound. The sound design really sells that movie too. But yeah, we can get into Cloverfield another time. Um, yeah, there I, was uh, something that really confused me though. Like, so the Cloverfield monster in this movie, 
Is it the same one as the original? I or is it oh, yeah. It doesn't look that like no it. Sense to it me doesn't either. look like it. It doesn't look the same. No, it is. Like how fucking I tall is it? The design was yeah. Th- I think that that's it's the taller. thing. They got the proportion all wrong, and apparently this movie is supposed to take place at the same time, right? Which but is two thousand eight. There's no fucking way. And we didn't have we didn't have spaceships in two thousand eight. There's, like well, that. The, there's 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 the timestamps on the dates in the original film. <laughs> like you can tell what date it is yeah. because their camera says it. In the original uh-huh. film, were they in like a depression, like the whole world, like low on no. fuel? No, it was just <laughs> so. normal. No, it wasn't. It just, yeah, I yeah. thought it was just they, like they never even mentioned it. It did not account for those kind of fucking things. And so, like, apparently, there's people that think like, oh, so it is and it isn't, sort of thing. You know, like maybe it's another other dimension where the same things are kind of happening, and there's more than two. You know, like p- perhaps <laughs> that's the case. Either way, whether it's the same monster or it's not the same monster. The marketing for this film is brutally fucking dishonest in terms of, like, of course. I didn't yeah. even see the Super Bowl ad until after I watched the movie, and I just watched it, and I'm like, you fucking assholes. <laughs> they totally missold it. There was the part in the trailer where they show the explosion from the original Cloverfield. Oh, yeah! And then they cut to the character w- reacting to a completely different explosion yeah. in the Cloverfield, the new one, and they oh, act yeah. as if it's the same explosion, yeah. but it isn't. That's fucking you know, That bullshit. was like Russians attacking, right? Or some shit like that. I don't even remember. This movie's so bad. My brain's trying to get rid of it. J. fucking Abrams has made his entire <laughs> career off of being a dishonest piece of shit and marketing uh-huh. films and TV shows that are meant only to blue ball people and pretend to give answers when they don't actually fucking do. And he's... Yeah. he's well, that's he why they that's brought what up the parallel does. universe thing. That's what he that's fucking the, does. That's the epitome. The The... The parallel universe thing is the epitome of just giving up. It's like time travel. Like, oh, we don't know what to do. So, oh, that took place in a parallel universe where they time travel back to fucking fix this. Does any? Do you, were you guys? Are you guys like old enough to remember all the fucking hype around Lost? Yeah. 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 Remember Never all watched that shit? It, but I refuse to mm-hmm. watch it because I I have very good accounts from people who have watched it about how pissed off they are about how nothing gets explained and how nothing makes any fucking sense. And this entire, entire this entire promise from the marketing of the show of saying like you want to figure out what the fuck is happening, right? Oh, you mm-hmm. never will. Sorry. Ha, ha gotcha. Like that's his whole fucking thing that's, with Cloverfield now. He's literally just That's this thing with everything. He's scooping he, this up mystery films box theory. that have he, nothing to do with Cloverfield at all and pretending as though it's going to explain the fucking universe better. Dude, this entire movie was made before it was even related to Cloverfield. <laughs> like, yeah. you fucking asshole. Yeah, That's, and you can tell. You piece of shit. What a turd. It's such a bad way to write, you know. like It's media. dishonest. It's insanely yeah. dishonest. It, it pisses me off. To make a whole up. movie and then just to keep adding on to it all this bullshit. Yeah. And then act as if, oh, now we're going to explain everything. Oh, yeah. We, we, I have the answers. He doesn't even fucking know. Dude, no one knows. You know, it, the truth is, 10 years ago, he made a fucking movie, and it was pretty good. He wanted to make an American Godzilla movie. And now he acts, acts as if he has a whole plan. Oh, I have a whole universe planned out. You don't have shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This would all be fine and dandy, like the exact same approach and uh connected film universe sort of thing even if it was still hung together by a a thread as long as it didn't contradict the other films and more importantly Mm -hmm. if they were all good you know like this film shit to begin with 10 cloverfield lane somehow even more upsetting because it was a great film that you raped and shat on you know yeah yeah like it's absolutely you're you're making things worse by your approach to how you're doing these films and i it just pisses mm-hmm. me off that a you would take a, an awesome script that didn't need you to shit on it and then just shit on it and be like haha it's cloverfield now and then b take a film that nobody should have fucking watched that didn't need to be made absolutely. that didn't need to be distributed and and shared with the masses and then lie to people straight to vhs fucking fucking lie to people and pretend like it explains the universe of these other films that people actually like just so you can Uh make some fucking money you're lying to people fuck it absolutely Ah, it's even when you put aside all that i mean that's what we're saying all that all the marketing and all the cloverfield and the the fucking cloverfield monster thing at the end that looks like it's out of food fight <laughs> when you take all that aside the the movie itself is fucking horribly written the yes. acting is bad 
The sets are awful. It looks like they wanted to imitate the Martian and Alien or Prometheus and something mm-hmm. or something. It was like, a They had no clue what they were doing. And it's all blue and orange. It looks disgusting. <laughs> Everything about it makes no sense. It's so bad. This is uh, this is one of those movies where the characters all look like actors. And mm-hmm. they're like they we're supposed to believe that they're like scientists and astronauts and shit, but they all just look like young, dumb, fucking pretty actors. <laughs> like they, yeah, there's nothing about them that I, I can believe that they're their characters. They're just we fucking keep describing actors. them using the word character, but that's an insult <laughs> to the word character and what it means because like the way these characters... I did it myself. The way these things are written, they're is technically like, characters. Yeah, they're technically characters, uh-huh. but they're all. They're just a motivation. All of them, uh, it's like a first first draft of a first draft. They wrote, this character has this motivation, needs to do this, then die. Like, yeah. for every character. And, like, they didn't, they didn't elaborate on that in any way. So that's all it is. Like, it's so pointless. There's nothing to it. They don't like- exist to be characters that you can find believable or relatable. They literally yeah. exist to be plot devices so that the film can get from point A to point B. And that's mm-hmm. that's just so it can the... start, have a middle, and then end. Exactly. <laughs> it's like it. it, it it's Little like, things. It's at that kind of thing, which is so incredibly common, that just makes me think to the writers or director, like, have you lost the fucking plot? Why are you making the movie? Are you making a movie <laughs> so so it can get from this shitty plot point to this shitty plot point? Like, why not make a movie to make something that people enjoy that they can relate to that can change their mind about something or open them to a new experience or impress them or you know th- why why even fucking make a movie oh yeah money that's hard yeah oh yeah money. how, hard, money how like, hard did you roll your eyes when you found out the main characters like entire arc and motivation sorry, uh, you know the main character her whole story um, and, like how predictable and uh, I, you know <sighs> I I was less focused on um her whole arc of like oh yeah I want my other self to be fine and also not really explain things as well as I could have in that given amount of time. <laughs> um, yeah. She's like on the phone like oh by the way you're not crazy but I'm me. You know what I would have fucking said? I would have I would have given a piece of information that only I would have known. Because that yeah. would, if I got a phone oh, call yeah. from somebody just saying like you're not crazy, this is me. Uh, turn off your electricity because it's bad. Uh, don't steal it. Uh, and also hug your family. Like, <laughs> I mean, you gotta you gotta be a bit more fucking persuasive. Unless unless she knows herself so well that she knows she's a fucking idiot who will believe anything she hears on the phone. Because <laughs> that's also a likely possibility. Um, but yeah, yeah I was. It's one of those movies. It's so dumb. You start thinking, like, am I not paying attention enough? Because these, yeah. these characters are doing things that I, I don't even understand why they're doing them. You know what? I'm I'm actually really glad this was a Netflix release because I had to rewind a couple times to figure yeah, out what the, yeah. what the so fuck they I. were trying to say here. I, was I, like, I know! <laughs> I've literally rewound the film, like, at least three times. Like, wait, what? Are they serious? Like, is this what they're doing? Is this what they're trying to say? Like... Did, My God. did you like the Skype conversations she would have with the with the Ugh. boyfriend, and it looked like it was shot on an Ari Alexa? Oh yeah. Like, how hard is it? I know you two probably complain about this all the time, but mm-hmm. the, like, just get a computer and fucking record that yeah. scene with a, a computer monitor or a computer camera, a webcam. I, uh, It'd be so much better. I, More believable, at least. Can we talk about how literally zero scientists and astronauts ever? would ever suggest trying to warp backwards through quantum entanglement. <laughs> like, so, I'm sorry. You're in, this, you're in this universe right now. You have this payload or, you know, this f- fucking infinite energy thing, and you could bring it to this, this Earth or whatever. You've got somebody who's from this Earth that can explain the ins and outs of whatever the fuck's going on anyway. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. Like, you're, you're most... <laughs> They they all decided pretty fucking unanimously, like, yeah, if we just do the same thing backwards, we'll wind up back at the same place. I'm sorry. <laughs> you, you seem to have a pretty fucking firm grasp on quantum entanglement, despite the fact that you even being here was a complete fucking mistake. 
<laughs> that that warped they a girl. So it warped a girl into the fucking wires of your ship. <laughs> You don't think that could be a potential risk of happening again? <laughs> uh-huh. You don't want to fucking maybe take some precautions? You don't want to have like a talk so about how that's the stupidest fucking idea ever and no one would ever do that? When when they when the world goes missing or whatever, Earth goes away, and yeah. they look at all the cameras, they're like all the different camera feeds, they don't see Earth. And then the, the Chinese lady runs <laughs> to her room to look out the window just to make sure that Earth isn't out there. I'm like, <laughs> you fucking saw every camera feed on the entire ship. Like, oh, I'm gonna look out my window and now I'm gonna see Earth. Hopefully. Did did you notice Little how many like scenes that. there were where there was some kind of argument going on where one character thought one thing and the other character had a differing opinion? There were a lot of there was and a that, lot of forced drama. But the conclusion of it was in, incredibly strange to me because it was just took like a couple of lines and then the person who originally was had a problem with it was suddenly like actually no yeah you're right let's do that right away let's not even question it anymore let's go let's go right now let's go yeah yeah even the music <laughs> yeah the, the music, music was making me laugh oh my god it sounded like they recorded the the score on garage band really <laughs> it was so bad it was a bad score <laughs> i wouldn't be surprised did um, you enjoy how subtle the o- overall film was? It, it oh, wasn't yeah. as subtle as Birdemic. Like your comparison <laughs> earlier is, is apt. Have you guys uh, have you guys seen uh, Evil Dead Two? Uh huh. Great movie. You, you know you know how Bruce Campbell's arm gets possessed and it's presented as a, as a gag in that film. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know how they did that in this film and it was not presented as a gag. <laughs> uh huh. They did it like it was a serious, yeah. dramatic thing. So, so I'm sorry. You're supposed to be how, horrified. How, how do people so quickly come to the conclusion, looking at a, a hand that's writhing around on the ground, trapped in a transparent box that you just happen to have on hand? What is that glass box that you have that yeah. you just trap? Whatever that is, you just <laughs> had it laying wraps. around. Like, oh, you know, it's a hand. It's an arm trapper. We have those on hand. On hand, but I'm... Um, <laughs> why, would, why could the arm move on its own, though? I don't know. And it's like... How did they come to the conclusion so quickly? It's trying to write something. Who would say that? I think it's trying to write something. Let's give it a pen. What? <laughs> How did I don't? It made no fucking sense. No, none oh, of it, it did. pissed me off. It's just nonsense. The, the scene with the guy's eye and his eye would go all over the place. <laughs> I like that. Oh, that was so and, good. And, he was, and, he was, and he was like, "What? What?" <laughs> <laughs> That was hilarious. Why did he try to kill everybody? I don't know. Everyone's just the, the, the 3D printed gun. Yeah. That was fucking hilarious. Did he, did he 3D <laughs> print the ammunition and cartridges too or what? Yep. I guess so. <laughs> he 3D printed gravity too. What? Ugh. <laughs> I don't even know if bullets would work in space. I don't. Well, like I mean, they, I mean, I mean, at I what could point be were they shooting it the, not in the... I don't know. The, they, I don't they know were what always you're trying to say the, here. Okay, so the way the ship is constructed, from what I can see, it's rotating constantly, and that's what creates the gravity, right? Because well, you'd still have an, uh, a force from you know whatever. You know what? You're totally whatever right. Whatever mechanism no, I'm propelling this movie's the... a fucking masterpiece. You're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I was completely off. It's okay. You're still young. I know. You're just a I don't little baby boy. That's why I go to liberal arts school. Oh, okay. I hear there's lots of jobs in uh, liberal arts related uh, fields. I, I hear that that's there, a surefire way to make money. Uh huh. Absolutely. It's a it's a thriving industry. Yeah. Especially with movies like this being made. When when the world ends and we all get warped in quantum entanglement and Cloverfield monster happens, the top jobs mm-hmm. that the government is going to ask for when we try to repopulate the planet first art teacher second art teacher's assistant <laughs> music teachers yes chorus instructors yeah. absolutely all, all that stuff. absolutely Ralph, necessary because if what you don't you've give got a bank that, on you got a bank on jj abrams approaching you and saying hey you see that film you're making uh-huh. imagine cloverfield in the <laughs> You put a monster in there Cl- mate. what would what would i call it uh king candy field yeah Cl- Cloverfield, because the film is called Lover, yeah, Cloverfield so they would just Lover. take Cloverfield and highlight Lover in it. Yeah, font. It's perfect. I got, I got to call up JJ right now. <laughs> Yo, JJ. I've actually had a friend. 
I have a friend who knows JJ and talked to him on the phone. Really? And JJ just yeah, he gave him some life advice and some filmmaking advice. Did he He's give a him a very good talk? guy? Apparently. Can we? Uh huh. <laughs> so, um, can we talk about at the beginning of the movie where they're watching like the news and it looks like a normal n- news station, and then they're like, "Oh, okay, we have a special guest uh, here. Why don't why don't you talk about the uh, the experiments they're doing in space right now, Mister?" And it's literally some guy just saying. You could unleash demons! Demons! <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, you let this guy on, the, is he some sort of expert on this shit? Like, <laughs> it, it, first weird. of all, I mean, if you are an expert, have there been any other recorded instances of demons being unleashed on Earth? How do you know that this energy <laughs> source that they're trying to release in space, how do you know that it could release demons and monsters? Quote, <laughs> him saying, from the past and the future, by the way, this turned out to be true. How did you get to that fucking uh-huh. conclusion, Mr. Crazy Guy, <laughs> that they let on yeah, the news? He, he, he called it the Cloverfield Paradox. Genius. Why did they let him on the news, and how did he fucking know that shit? What, what about their experiments they were doing in space? First of all, how would he have all of, the, all, all of the details and schematics for exactly what they were doing to create this energy? Second, how did he what? know that it would do that? <laughs> I just don't understand, how how can you write something this contrived and terrible and not have someone along the line, along the due process, read it and say, none of this makes any sense. We're not going forward with this. We're we're shutting this down because this is so stupid. I would almost expect that from a production, if let's say, if let's say JJ and Bad Robot and, you know, all these quote unquote professionals were involved on the project from day one, you would expect that. But it seems like the whole movie was made, and then they just added a couple extra shots and lines to make it yeah. something that they could sell as a Cloverfield film. So I don't know if which one's better or worse at this point. I really don't. They're just I equally bad. Like, which one's just, more embarrassing? <laughs> they're just cynical business decisions. Like It's not even thinking about the end product at all. It's totally about That's just business true. and advertising. Yeah. They did, you know... When it seems like they don't give a shit, it's probably because they don't give a shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. JJ. Like at least Cloverfield Lane was a good product that they got loads of eyes on through adding the shitty bit at the end. But like mm-hmm. this, it's like, did no one watch this and think, maybe we should choose another project that's being made and put Cloverfield on that because that at least might not be the worst thing ever. I'm not even, I'm not even fucking kidding. As soon as the movie was over, I just, I had this, um, this, this, imagination of of just jj abrams looking (laughs) online and seeing the shitty reviews and how people think his the new cloverfield paradox film is shit and i just i just imagined him like on a sunny like resort golf course somewhere taking a (laughs) sip of some some alcoholic beverage with his legs crossed and just thinking like eh looking on his phone and just like being like (laughs) whatever and like smirking to himself like I'm not going to care about that because I've made money. I literally just had that yeah. vision in my head as soon as I finished the film. I'm like, this is what he's probably doing right now. <laughs> uh-huh. I mean, he won. He sold it to Netflix. They paid him. And that was the yeah. end of it. And the rest of it's kind of irrelevant. And we'll all forget about it. <laughs> it's, just, oh it's, so, it's so I think indicative. this is going to be one of the worst movies of the year. Like when it's all said and done by the end of this I think year. You're right. I think this is going to make it on I, most of the list. I, um, before I watched the film... It was at a 6.9 rating on IMDb right before I watched the film. By the time I had finished the film, it was at a 6.4. Uh, now the next day, it's <laughs> at a 6.0. It seems to be just going down. Wow. So uh, it'll be Good. it'll be five point something by the end when it levels out, I guess. But like uh, that Netflix film, Bright, has like a six point something, and Jesus Christ! Oh wow! Like, <laughs> you know, is it better than Bright? Uh, no, Bright's worse better. Than Bright. Yeah, it's worse than Bright's Bright. Bright's better. I mean, I haven't seen Bright. So. Bright, I was I expecting know. something that was as bad as Suicide Squad, and I was pleasantly surprised that it wasn't. Uh, it was still a mess it's and boring really and not, not not good, but it wasn't nearly as bad as what I thought it would be. I mean, it's competent, right? Uh, one more one more thing. <laughs> it I was like a script. I just found it boring. Um, really dull. So, the the Nether World was like making the magnetic thing happen with the guy with no arm and he like the the goo wrapped around his face and oh was that what was moving 
it was it's like so confusing. It was like the goop thing was like the, from the little you know like the caulking gun or whatever he had. Yeah, they kept the, that he was using it. to fix. Shit. He would like put energy, and then and He'd then like, he used yeah. a bunch of it, and then like all the everything metal started flying to the wall opposite of him. But then the goop like wrapped it, like, around him. It. Was like here, this you're mine now. And then and then a, literally it. Not even kidding. It's a CO2 canister. A a compressed CO2 canister gets sucked to the wall, hits the wall, and then the whole room explodes. Did it make like a spark or something? Like what happened? I mean, it's CO2. <laughs> yeah, I, don't know. I love that. What did they that say well. was in there? Like that, that it was just a bunch of they they said there's like concentrated levels of oxygen not to like light a match because it'll explode. Right. They said that before. But it was just a CO2 canister that that hit the wall. That was really I weird. I thought that was one of the worst scenes in the movie where it just made no sense well, and it had to get to this point. I mean, dude, there's so many bad scenes I don't even remember that. I just you know, okay, if we're going to if we're going to accept the logic of this alternate universe just conveniently picking off characters for no fucking reason. If we accept that and pretend as though that's consistent, Still, the missing arm moving by itself doesn't make any sense. Like that—that that yeah. doesn't tie into anything. Like that—that that no. has no relation with anything they've explained at all in the entire film. Like I don't. That's straight out of a different it's, film. It's like, yeah, I mean, was he? Who was controlling that arm? Was it him in the How other universe? Because like oh. in the other universe, the ship had crashed and they were like dead in the ocean. So like what? How, whose arm was arms that? Arms can't move on. <laughs> Where did it come? When your arm is cut off, it doesn't start like running around. Like it this has is... to connect to like a, a, a nervous system. And, yeah, like, a brain. I mean like it. it who was con who wrote that down? And who knew? Who knew like what the arm was supposed to write to write it down? That you know why? Yes, they said that's they one just of, that's one of the plot the points that makes so the least arm sense. told them to cut the guy open, and they cut the guy open. And what they found, like the why did the arm know that? Yeah, <laughs> an arm doesn't have a brain. Even if, like, let's let's say that the arm was connected to the, the alternate universe version of the guy with no arm. Let's say that it was his arm from another universe that showed up in this one. How? Still, I mean, like, did the guy in the other universe see? That guy, the 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 <laughs> possessed guy, eat this big box or like surgically insert it into himself or what happened there to make? I don't understand. No, it the, makes literally no sense. It, it, there's nothing about zero it. Zero fucking sense. No sense at all. It's and, that kind yeah, of ineptitude that just stuns me. Here's though. a question: Is there anything good about this movie? Because no, I've been thinking on it for a few days and I can't think. Of I'm anything, giving it honestly. a two out of ten. But only because I'm like, I want I want to give it a two. Like I can't even think of a reason to give it a two. <laughs> you know? Like I can't think of anything I like. The only reason I'm, I think some of the shots are okay. I'm giving it like, a that's it though. I'm giving it a two because of so many other films that I've seen that are worse than this that would be ones. But that's about <laughs> I it. Guess. If you, I, I mean if you want to compare this to Bye Bye Man, then yeah. But, <laughs> I mean not only is this just an awful movie, but it, that cynical business angle of it too, and the fact that they try to market it as part Pissed of the series, which just off. has nothing to do. It's like just and, as bad as Transformers or something like that. Yes, like it, when you get to that point, I'm like, you know what? I think this is a one. I think it deserves. It's a worthless. One. It is utterly worthless. It's, it has it's no meaning worthless. or point. Um, mm -hmm. There's two more things I want to talk about, and then we can go on to the next uh, the next section. Um, uh -huh. First of all. The logic of the characters in terms of why they would want to go back to the other universe and the logic of the villain for her wanting. So she says, I'm not going to let 8 billion people die. I'm going to kill these people to let 8 billion people live. But if you think about it, yeah. if they were just planning on bringing back the energy source to the other planet, wouldn't those 8 billion people die and not like, I mean, you're still killing 8 billion people no matter what you do. <laughs> Because you're preventing That's it true. from existing in one universe and not the other. So your logic's a little fucking flawed. You know? And also, I love how she I love how she went into the fucking escape pod, pretended as though she was gonna go with the main character, and instead of like, you know, injecting her, sedating her, or doing anything, 
She just punched her. <laughs> she literally just socked her in the <laughs> yeah. fucking face and that, ran away and was like, but then, good on you. Like, my work here is yeah, done. That, but then she shoots the other guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, why didn't you shoot her? And then the third guys. guy, and then the third guy, they just get in a fist fight. Yeah, why didn't you shoot her? Like, why, not, why didn't you just shoot all three of them in the head? Yeah. Seriously, what was that about? You literally just punched her in the oh. face and walked away. And then that fight scene in the little cafeteria. Oh, God. And she gets sucked out of the airlock or whatever. Ugh. That. And that's... I mean, I get another mean, effect uh, that looked like... That's another trope. Looked like, it looked like PlayStation 1 graphics. That was that was yet another trope, <laughs> you know? Like, everything about this is a fucking trope. Yeah. There's no, nothing in this film that is original, you know? There's no idea that this film used that was its own idea. Everything's so fucking derivative and uninspired, it's god-awful. But it, it's taking all the bad stuff from all these movies. It's That's just not doing it well. Thing. I mean, you can like, let's let's take everything from Prometheus that was bad yeah. and take none of the good stuff. Let's take the dumb characters, but we won't take any of the good stuff. <laughs> Alex, do you have anything to add to that? It's, yeah, it's not even like a film. It's 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 just nothing. It's just scenes that are like, oh, that's a bit from Alien. Oh, that's a bit from Event Horizon. Oh, there's the Cloverfield monster for a minute. The end. It's just fucking pointless. <laughs> nothing about it of worth. It's utterly just meaningless. The characters like that. This film has nothing to say. What what is the purpose of this film existing aside from it being a product like a fucking Transformers film? It is nothing. Like there's nothing to even talk about about it because it's just nonsense. In two weeks, Ooh. we'll have all forgotten about it entirely. Yeah. <laughs> I already forgot some of it. Yeah. Or most of Honestly. it. Honestly. Um, last thing I wanted to talk about with this film before we move on. So at the end of the first Cloverfield, there's that thing that falls from the sky in the background. Is it, mm -hmm. is it trying to imply that what oh. fell is the escape pod? Or is it trying to imply that it's a piece of the ship from like when they first tried to warp because if it's either of those things it still doesn't make sense with the timeline at all yeah it doesn't it literally does not, not make any i didn't even think about that but because then the cloverfield monster jumps out of the clouds immediately after yeah so the timeline doesn't sync up at i just all. i think it's just one of those things where like there's enough within the original cloverfield that's left up to interpretation intentionally that mm -hmm. there'll be enough of an online discussion or debate to be had that will continue making the film relevant and uh jj abrams is a piece of shit for letting that happen because there are no real answers they contradict themselves and uh it's literally just a marketing scheme yeah that's what made the original one interesting is that it had no answers so you just kind of left a yeah piece you know what yourself. i um and then there's the there were the stupid people complaining like oh we need everything explained to us and then you realize once you have everything explained to you, it's a bunch of stupid shit. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. The way. <laughs> Whenever you find out the answer, it's always lame. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's always lame. It so it's like better just to leave it. It doesn't always have to be lame. Like there, there, there are ways you can do it where it's not lame, but it has to be something that's pre coordinated. It can't be something. Yeah, yeah like, exactly. If, plan. if when it was mm -hmm. left up to interpretation, it was intentionally left up to interpretation and you didn't have some sort of explanation already lined up then explaining it after the fact usually turns out like shit. Um, look at, otherwise, look at it's Alien exactly Covenant, what Cloverfield is. You know, trying to explain oh, where the God. alien came from. But it's, yeah. it's on that level. Yeah. Oh, no. And oh, they don't that even was know. pretty bad. That was a kind of... Uh -huh. That's kind of a lame explanation. Kind of a that's lame exactly origin story. It reminded me of that. Oh, God. One out of ten? One out of ten, Alex? Oh, I, no. I don't rate things out of ten. Just don't watch it. It sucks. It's pointless. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, like, at first I thought it was kind of funny. And like just whatever, but when you really think about it, yeah, me too. It's kind of insulting. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> the more you think I, about, you know what? You know why I gave it a two out of ten? Why? Because they didn't release it in theaters. <laughs> you didn't have to pay money that's for why. it. Uh huh. That's why. You that know what? It. That's a good thing about it. If if that I had to pay for though. that, it would be a one out of ten. But <laughs> it, since it, they they knew it sucked and they put it on Netflix for free, <laughs> so that's why. You know, what? I'm going to change my rating back to a two. <laughs> You know what? I I'll give it to them. Give it a one. I swear to God, if it came out in a theater, I would give it a one. <laughs> no, but that, it didn't. That's not. That's like not it, fair. Like, listen, if if Chips came out in on Netflix, <laughs> straight to Netflix, I would be like, okay, it's it's for no, people but, that aren't made to enjoy it. No, but the film. Right? Think about the film. <laughs> think about the film. There's nothing to think about. That's, that's <laughs> the second the point. you think about it, you want to fucking that's have an point. aneurysm. One more. One more thing I should mention is that. There's kind of this unfortunate 
trend that I see with uh, Netflix films at this point, where I feel like it's um, almost unintentionally incentivizing terrible movies because <laughs> as much as like okay uh-huh. you look you look at like the regular theatrical box office sure there's incentivization for you know derivative terrible remake reboot blah 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 the studio system has its own its own issues uh with netflix uh-huh. every time there's a terrible movie that gets released that nobody seems to like like the death note film Netflix Ugh. considers that a success because they look at how many people have viewed it. But in reality, exactly. people view it because they already have a Netflix account. And it's like, oh, well, I'm already paying for it. So it's like, I might as well check out this piece of shit. But as long as you're doing that, it's like Netflix doesn't care. So if maybe they counted like, okay, how many people are signing up for Netflix to get this film, then that would be a more accurate way of determining that. But right now they're like, oh, look at how many people watched it. This was a success. Let's make a Death Note 2 or some yeah. shit, you know? Like, uh. So God, we're moving on. Shit, um Yeah. So that was our that was our film discussion section of the podcast. And we'll have one every podcast on a different film each time. Uh now we are going to uh questions, which any other podcast will have questions from the audience. You can ask us. In the links below, we have a Reddit, we have well, a subreddit, we have a Facebook page, and we have a Twitter account, all of which the names were not taken. Hooray. Nice. Um, mm-hmm. So feel free to ask us questions for the next episode there. Otherwise, um, we came up with our own questions. I didn't really put much thought into mine. I'm hoping you guys came up with more questions than I did. I'll just ask mine first because I only have one. <laughs> I was so busy. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, it's pretty fucking lame. What's your favorite movie and why? <laughs> That's a cute one. Ah. Uh, okay, go. go I'll let you go first. Uh, I'm curious. Um, my go-to normally is um, Ridley Scott's Alien. I, I really, wow. I adore that film. <laughs> fucking why is that a wow? Mistake? Fucking pleb, you wow? piece of shit, you normie. Why is that a wow? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Nothing, because I I've, I know people who love that movie, but no one ever says it's their favorite. So it's my I'm favorite. I know, you know, I know a few people I, that say... I don't blame you. I, I know a few people that know, say it's their favorite, so... It's an, it's an excellent movie. Yeah, I just think... Uh, the atmosphere of that movie I just find so creepy. And it just really gets to me every time. Like it, It's one that I watched when I was quite young originally, and I thought it was really scary when I was young. like Way scarier than I would ever now. But even mm-hmm. upon re- yeah. revisiting it, it has such a unique tone and feel to it. And and they take it so seriously, but, but without going down the Cloverfield bullshit lane where everything's yeah. over-explained and everyone's motivations, everyone actually feels like a real person, you know? Mm-hmm. Everything yeah. about it is just seems so thoughtful. And there's there's loads left up to your imagination, even though that's kind of been... Not anymore! Just... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, and from yeah. the set designs that were just insane back in the day and the, the lighting and just all of it. The acting's really good. The score's amazing. It's just an all-round yeah. really solid, great film. It was uh, yeah. very um, influential and revolutionary for its time, yep. both in tone, presentation, concept, and etc. And arguably the best, like, creature design for a thing, like, ever. Yeah. Like a... Ever. Yeah. Way to go, H.R. Uh, Giger. Designs. Yeah. Given yeah. props, yeah. if that's how you pronounce his name, H.R. Giger. That's, it was supposed to be for Dune, right? But then the whole yeah, project right. fell apart. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of things that were supposed to be for Dune. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even the music in that movie is excellent. Every Everything about that movie is yeah, yeah. fantastic. So I've justified it. So suck on these. Yeah, I agree with you. It's an excellent movie. Not my favorite. My What's favorite? your favorite then, Ralph? Goodfellas, by far. Okay. Yeah, that makes so, sense. So there's a little bit of background in this. I'm from Queens, as many <laughs> of you know. <laughs> Um, oh really? So I, I, so like the reason I love Good Time is because everyone in that movie is literally yeah. people right out of Queens, and the same thing with Goodfellas. My uncle, his name is Angelo Seppi, he was the fucking guy <laughs> in the movie, not the actor, the real life person who gets thrown in the meat truck and dies. <laughs> He was part of the heist in the movie. So like, I literally have blood ties to the people in this movie. Whoa! But aside from that, the, the it's fucking You're not hilarious. Kidding? I'm not kidding. Wow. What? I have blood ties to these the human beings and the, the, the good fellas, the characters in Goodfellas. Aside from that, acting's terrific. 
Uh, it's shot beautifully. Some of the most gorgeous shots. Uh, obviously, the shot where they're going into the the club or whatever it's called. Uh, Joe Pesci's great, and just the what it has to say about people like that and human nature. How they mm-hmm. how like this whole movie. You have this really fucked up evil guy killing people, doing drugs, beating people up, and then at the very end of the movie, he goes, "I loved it, and if I didn't get caught, I would keep doing it." And then mm-hmm. the fucking movie's over. Mm-hmm. And I, as seeing that as a 13 year old, I was like, wow, that's fucked. And now look at you. <laughs> Cause I'm used to movies. <laughs> yeah. And now look at me. Right. <laughs> and that's all I got to say. Um, it's just an excellent, excellent, excellent movie. I rewatched it recently cause it was just on Netflix before I give and by far. Oh, it's nice. so good. Before I give my answer, I want to ask you guys a couple questions about yours. Um, Okay. Uh, uh-huh. Alex, how do you feel the um, first Alien compares to Aliens? Uh, James Cameron, do you feel as though he kind of bastardized it, or is it just like not as good but still good? Like, um, how do you feel? I think it's kind of like uh, oranges and apples. Yeah, like different thing. Yeah, it's so different. Yeah, very um, different. I goals. still like. I I like it a lot as well. Um, I just don't think it captures quite the. Just what makes Aliens special. Like yeah. I used to think when I was younger and, and more dumber, um, I liked Aliens more because there was more action, there was more space craziness. marines. Yeah, she f- you get away from her, you bitch. But like, you know, yeah. you, when you <laughs> grow up a little bit, yeah, <laughs> you appreciate different things, and there, mm-hmm. there is just something about the somber nature of Alien that is yeah. just yeah. pretty. It's a lot more contained and personal, and yeah, yeah, yeah. and mature. Yeah, yeah. And- um and Ralph, what do you um? I guess how do you think uh, Goodfellas compares to uh, the Wolf of Wall Street? Because they have their similarities. Oh yeah, they're. I consider it a trilogy of oh, yeah. Goodfellas, Casino, and Wolf of Wall Street, yeah. where all three are basically the same. Mm-hmm. It's the same kind of movie. Yeah, but they're told from different. Like the Goodfellas is the mafia, uh, Casino is the casino business, and then Wolf of Wall Street's Wall Street. Yeah. And it's about the kind of sociopathic nature of all three of those industries, mm-hmm. basically. Yeah. And I think Goodfellas is the best one because Scorsese is such a, uh, you know, he grew up in that environment. So he has such, yeah. such familiarity with those people and how they talk and how they are. So and all, all... that's why, you know, even The Wolf of Wall Street's my, ter- it's a terrific movie yeah. by far. But he doesn't have that same... It doesn't have that same charm that Goodfellas has. Yeah, I I, th- I find it interesting that all three of those scenarios really do attract sociopaths and immoral yeah. people to be a part of them. And it's funny how yeah. one of those was a legal, uh, vis- or sorry, I guess Casino would be too. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. That's the interesting Rain thing part. about it. And they all get away with it. Well, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Which is fucked, but <laughs> that's the point. Yeah. Gives gives perspective. My favorite trilogy. I guess I would call my favorite unofficial. It's it's like the Cornetto trilogy. Yeah, I guess like yeah. that. Where it's not really a trilogy. It's just the same kind of theme mm-hmm. explored in different ways. Uh, but yeah. My favorite movie is The Holy Mountain, directed by Shocker, dude. Alejandro Hodorowski. <laughs> and I've mentioned this a few times in my videos, so anybody who follows my channel, this is no surprise. And uh, the reason why it's my favorite movie is because... I feel like I really relate to it in many ways. And it's a very, um, yeah. I don't consider myself a spiritual person at all, even though it is a very spiritual film. Um, but I think that, you know, with Hodorowski being a very, um, a very feelings based filmmaker, like he'll take concepts and instead of trying to make them constructed in a logical narrative sense, he'll focus on, what he's feeling and what it means to him and there's other filmmakers that do that and there's you know plenty that don't do it well at all you know i (laughs) there's a lot of movies where i would i would say they try to do something similar but they just wind up being incredibly pretentious and purposeless whereas with hodorowsky's films and especially the holy mountain um it is so accessible to understand especially after multiple watches what he's getting at and the statements that he's trying to make. Like some of them are, are just incredibly obvious from the first watch. Um, his statements on uh, religion and greed and corruption. There's a scene where uh, 
there's a bunch of women lined up in a uh, assembly line and they're all getting painted on their butts, just like green and red paint on their mm-hmm. butts. And they're all sitting down one at a time on a, on a canvas and making art. And the narrator explains how this is an art factory and think about like what that's trying to say about art, you know, like the idea of an art factory itself, like this entire film is presented in a very dystopian kind of manner in a very yeah. absurdist yeah. kind of matter where it's trying to essentially say, here is what is crazy or fucked up about society. And here's where we are heading, but not really, you know, it's too ridiculous to actually be real. Um, yeah. But the concepts they like present. Brazil. Oh yeah. In a way, yes, Brazil, a Brazil is a, purpose. is a much more literal film uh, yeah. with much more of an actual conventional narrative, even though a lot yeah, of people yeah. would, you know, not even consider it to have that conventional of a narrative. Uh, whereas yeah. the Holy Mountain is is like borderline inaccessible. Um, really, but I, I love. <laughs> yeah. It's not like oh yeah, I agree with the politics of the film, therefore I like it. It's that I I love how it's presented, and how when you present a film like that, and in in uh, some cases like you know Synecdoche, New York, is a great example mm-hmm. of a film where, if you present it in a way where there's something that an audience member can figure out for themselves rather than being directly explained to, but there's still something there. And it's not just random nonsense. It's not like some art house uh, film where everything's random just because, but there's something actually yeah. there and you allow the audience to figure it out for themselves. It, it creates so much more of a personal significance for the person watching. I feel. Yeah. I don't know if you guys agree oh. with me or not, but like when you, when you figure it out I... for yourself, and it, it relates to you personally, and you could only figure it out for yourself if you understand it sort of thing, you know? Like, it, it's a much more mm-hmm. personal, relatable, and meaningful experience, I feel. Yeah, I'm going to appreciate that. That's loaded. Have you guys seen Damn, the movie? I've seen the first 20 minutes of it. Did you shut I, it I off I shut it off because I hated it. <laughs> no, 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 no. It, it was, we were getting high and I turned it on. I watched the first 20 minutes and there was a point where I'm like, I can't do this right now. Oh, <laughs> but, but that's a good, from what? That's a good I, I, time to Yeah, do I know. It, I will watch it. I will totally watch it one day. I swear to God. That's on my list. The Holy Mountain um, is one of those films but, where you can watch it high. You know, you won't. Yeah. <laughs> the Holy Mountain is a film that you probably should watch high. Whether totally. it's your first watch or your yeah. second watch, I would say watch it sober too. <laughs> you know, don't. I, I'd say the first time I, I try to watch the movie sober, and then second time, third time, maybe. Yeah. You know? Anyway, uh, highly recommend. I have a question it. for it's you, not though, for everybody, but. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. I bet it's fantastic. From what I saw, it's pretty. Oh man. I, I mean, that opening scene alone is is very intriguing. It's jarring. And, and well I, shot and yeah. I just. But it's very interesting. The cinematography and like. The colors, the oh, the set design's amazing. The costumes. Everything ab- about yeah. it is just, it's so, and it's so meta, too. Like, I don't want to spoil the ending, but, the, like, the last line in the movie is just, like, the most meta shit that you've ever heard. <laughs> and it's just, <laughs> oh, yeah, just just watch it. It's, it's, it's so self-aware. It knows exactly what it is. It's absurdist. It doesn't take itself way too seriously, like a lot of art films that try to be it wind up doing. You know, it's very playful in its approach. It's hilarious, yeah. and it's yeah. I got I got like that sense sad from it, and depressing the at the same minutes. time. And it's it's just it's it's everything that I really want out of a movie in one movie. And I don't think that anything could ever replace it. Perhaps maybe in the future, Synecdoche, New York, is a close second. But I mean, yeah. it's it's a it's it's a very personal experience to me, and I love it. I love watching it. I yeah. I feel like every time I watch it, and I've seen it like thirty times or some shit. Every time I watch it, I figure out or I come to some sort of new realization about a scene or what it means to me or yeah. at, a di- at a different point in my life. And, you know, the perspective of a certain scene has changed. And, you know, I don't even understand half of the movie because I'm not a spiritual person, as I've said. And there's so much of mm-hmm. that film that's mm-hmm. like directly lifted from like the Torah and all these weird fucking spiritual rules and cards and and all that shit that i'm just not interested in and if i actually spent my time studying that shit i i feel like i'd understand so much more about the film but it's not necessarily about deciphering it it's about what it means to you and that's part of why i love yeah. it and it's more about the the emotion the feeling the journey mm-hmm. than it you're is gonna taking anything literally out of it you're gonna ask um, but something, i have a question yeah. for you adam about the movie yes um 
you don't have to explain plot point for plot sure. point what you thought the movie meant. But if you were to recommend or give a vague plot outline as to what this <laughs> oh. movie is, what would it be? Um, so I'm interested to hear it because everyone has a totally different one. Because I have some friends who fucking love this movie and they completely disagree on certain things. Well, okay, so I mean, like I've kind of explained like the purpose of the film being like an absurdist kind of dystopian approach to uh, basically providing commentary on life, politics, religion, uh, workers, corruption, greed, drugs, etc. Um, and that is basically the the outlying concept of the film. But it's also a movie that is kind of separated into three three acts, like most films, but in this film very differently. Um, mm -hmm. The first act, you're basically following like a Jesus like figure, um, and that's where you get um, most of the religious commentary, and there's barely any dialogue. Um, the second act of the film is um, basically explaining these I, I forget how many planets they have they're like eight or nine planets um and each of these characters that are introduced uh with this dialogue and this narration um they're basically being used as a way to describe different concepts of greed like they're all terribly immoral and they all have have this this selfish interest of self-preservation and the entire reason why they're brought together is to um like figure out and understand how to become immortal gods and survive their own deaths and and transcend the physical world you know and in that is yeah. sort of an act of selfish or selfishness those are like basically just a bunch of separate scenes to introduce these characters and introduce the concepts that these characters are basically excuses to explore. Um, mm -hmm. And then the, the last third of the film is those characters on the journey to the Holy Mountain that I don't really want to get too much into, but it takes a very spiritual um, journey and kind of explores very meta concepts about, you know, to lose... In the, in the objective of becoming immortal, how much of yourself do you lose in order to do that, you know? And I, I, I don't want to get too much into it because I, I don't want to spoil yeah. this movie, but... Um, yeah. I mean, so, it's already like, pretty dense. It's really... Yeah. I, <laughs> this plot description. <laughs> it, there's, I, I, I mean, you're asking me to provide a, an answer on something that where it, there is no real typical answer for it. Yeah. You know, like you can't... You can't uh -huh. It's not like a single character making his way from point A to point B that you can just talk about in a three act structure very simply. Like the th three separate acts that there are in this film all have kind of different goals and are woven together in a very unique way. Um, so I know it's like there's no way to explain the movie without having a very complicated answer. Yeah, um, that's interesting though. But Thank you. yeah, I. I'm gonna check this out soon. Please watch it. It's so. it's a I I love the movie, yeah. obviously. So, um, and you guys had some other questions, right? Uh huh. Who wants to go next? I guess we each get one. Yeah, Ralph, you go first. I'll go. Let's do it. I got a few questions here. Pick one. All right, let's go with this one. If there is one book you would want to see be made into a film, what is it? Would you direct it, or would you have another guy direct it? If so, you get to pick the director you want to make it. Hmm. Got it. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Oh where's Waldo? Where where <laughs> where's oh, yeah. Where's Waldo? Directed by Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know what? I bet he could make it work, dude. Fucking if I not? found out Quentin Tarantino is directing a Where's Waldo film, I'd be so stoked. Yeah, so would be the first one everybody to get a would in be seventy-five so millimeter. He would make it work. <laughs> he totally would. I totally believe it. It's just the first scene is Waldo and some other character talking for ten minutes. Then Waldo shoots him. Hey, dude! And they play some Ennio Marconi. <laughs> and where's Waldo? Comes up in big yellow text. <laughs> <laughs> I could totally see it. Have you ever noticed that squirrels carry just as many diseases as rats, but? 
<laughs> you know, you know, you you won't want rats in your home, but you for your friends with squirrels. Have you ever f- found that interesting? The different the different associations that we make with different animals, despite them being relatively similar. Yeah, it's just like the Jews. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, what's yours? Um, I don't have an answer for that one because every every book oh, yeah? is a film already. <laughs> that, that's a good. <laughs> the, that's why I was I a little like stumped. <laughs> yeah, all the, yeah, really. All I mean, the books they, I like yeah. are, are films already. All right. Well, how about if if the movie didn't exist that you're thinking of, and you, oh, you oh, would yeah. want to see it made? Yeah. Again. What if there was like a better? Because version? even even my yes, even my answer has yeah. a movie made out of it in the fifties that no one's seen. So. I mean, I could elaborate on mine by saying, like, I really enjoyed the book The Ruins, and that got made into a really shitty horror movie. But if it was in different <laughs> hands, then perhaps it would have turned out fine, you know. So Tarantino's hands? Yeah, you know, yeah, it actually probably would. But um, <laughs> I mean, I don't read that many books. I'm a dumb, dumb person who's just so uneducated and uncultured because I don't read that many books because I decide to Aww. spend my time differently. And watch a lot of movies okay. instead. I don't read a lot of books either. Yeah. It's fine. Alex, what's your answer? I, I'd choose, if Blade Runner didn't exist, I'd choose to Android's Dream of Electric Sheep, probably. I, yeah? Yeah. And who would you have directed? Probably Ridley Scott, <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> nah, go with someone else. Yeah. Go with yeah? someone else. Because we've seen what his one was like, and, you know, it's pretty good, but it's got some weird bits. Interesting. Let's have Denny Villeneuve direct. <laughs> good idea. <laughs> Uva Bowl. Uh, mine would be uh, Alex. If you still want to, no, I'm think done. of a director. You're good. Mine is The Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. Yeah. Mm. Uh, would you direct it? I, I mean, I I guess I would because I love the <laughs> book so much. But if I had to pick, I, yeah, yeah. If I had to pick, I would probably do it. It's an excellent book about a uh, society in the future where they get rid of all free will nice. and everyone's happy because everyone's dr- on drugs all the time oh, awesome. <laughs> and always fucking and always watching sports and it's portrayed as almost a comedy comical but then the fact that this book was written almost 100 years ago and we're almost living in that society now yeah where all we do is fuck and do drugs mm. <laughs> and watch sports i mean not literally sports but consume entertainment esports i think it's really interesting yeah exactly so the question of it is, is it better to live in a free society where you're constantly miserable or to live in a society where you're a slave, essentially, but you're always yeah. happy I have, and all your basic needs are felt and, and constantly, you know, I have not read it quenched. It's a great book. It's almost like Fahrenheit. Uh, what's it called? Fahrenheit 9-11 or something. <laughs> you know, I kept, I kept thinking Fahrenheit 911, 451. Yeah. I was thinking Fahrenheit 911. It's almost like that, except it's much more comical. Yeah. They all they have lines of dialogue like, "Oh, are you going to the orgy this Wednesday?" And they constantly say "orgy porgy" stuff Whoa. like that. <laughs> Just so many, so many brilliant lines like that. I love that book. Anyway, Alex, you're up. Animal Farm would actually be a good answer for me as well. Nice. Anyway, um, oh yeah, has that's been adapted into like a cartoon or something, wasn't it? I think so, but like I, I'm yeah, like a proper, you know, like a good movie. I think you know, I like think they are actually TV. making one. Um, I don't. I would know love who's to see a, like a Wes Anderson stop motion I, on that. That'd be cool. Yeah, it could be really or Charlie Kaufman and... in the same style as Anna Lisa. Yeah. I could totally yeah, see that. Yeah, those two together. What's the other director's name? Duke Johnson. Adam, you probably Duke know. Johnson. Duke Johnson. I could totally see those two. That yeah. could be great. I seem to remember you mentioning Anna Lisa on your channel, Alex, before. Yeah, uh, I actually watched it based on, I'm pretty sure, your recommendation nice. in one of your videos. Um, yeah. yeah, really, really great film, that one. One Wasn't sure big what to expect, circle but... jerk. If you ever, yeah. <laughs> ever want a podcast yeah, that, that's Charlie, where everybody if you're basically listening. agrees with each other, <laughs> this, is the, this is the one to go for. <laughs> uh-huh. Right. Charlie, can, Charlie said I'm smart. Adam. Alex, okay. your question. I have a question. I have a question for you guys. Uh oh. Why do you guys feel the need to use rating systems to rate films? Ooh. <laughs> Why do, do you, you feel the need Adam? to rate? Well, um, you made a... artwork out of ten. Dude, you made a fucking video on this and interviewed yeah, me I know, for I... it. <laughs> <laughs> no. you, you, you literally interviewed <laughs> me this exact same question no, 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 and no, made no. a video about it. And like, no, there's this we... gigantic Twitter message that you read. 
<laughs> no, we need more. No, let's discuss this story. We can I, just, like, can play, I tell a little story I'll first? I'll play a fucking clip this? from your video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll answer first, but first I got a little story about this. So a- Alex asked me for that video. Mm-hmm. Um, Ralph, why do you use movies? Can you talk about the scores in your reviews? Review <laughs> scores. And I thought he meant the music I use in my videos. Oh. So I wrote him a paragraph about the music I use in my videos. And he's like, no, I meant like review scores. I'm like, oh, I'm fucking retarded. Okay, sorry. And I wrote him another paragraph. Okay. Quick little side note. Anyway, I think it's good because um, when you talk about a lot of movies, you, you start, people start questioning like, which movie does he like better? Should I see this movie over this movie? And if you just kind of say, "Oh, I like every movie," but why like, does oh, I that like matter? This movie. I like this movie because it's it's a thing where I kind of want to recommend more some movies more than others. Where if I say I like Lady Bird and I like Moonlight and I like uh, Blade Runner, then it's not clear. I don't think that I like those movies on a different in a different way. I like Blade Runner and Moonlight much more than I do Lady Bird. But if I was speaking just in plain English, I would say. It would sound like I like all three of them equally, but you know, yeah. isn't that why you, you know what I'm trying to say? Isn't that why you like it's it's I think it's I think it's easy to boil it down to a number just so everyone gets the impression of the kind of movie to expect and what you're gonna see. Like I like Disaster Artist, you know, but I don't like it as much as I like Lady Bird, so that's why I do it. But then you start to fall into the trap of like it was even happening to you earlier in this very podcast where you were trying <laughs> to figure out what number to assign cloverfield P yeah or whatever that, that that is a thing but i also don't think about it too much i mean i thought with cloverfield it's a fucking joke because who cares if it's a two or a one <laughs> piece of shit but it's right? like but th- that is to me it's, it's like assigning a number to paintings or something like it's just well if you were reviewing paintings then you might do that but, I could see I mean, that too. You, you can assign a number to any art form with 10 being the highest possible and one being the lowest possible. You could even do it one through five if you want to. You're basically just using it as a way to illustrate to your audience that you think this is of the best or in the middle or of the worst, right? And so, I mean, uh-huh. like you can, yeah, for sure, you can say that independently of assigning a number to it. But, you know, it, there's tons of films that I would give, you know, eight or above, which is a rare occurrence, but I still have a lot yeah. of criti- criticisms to make about it, and so I make a video and I'm t- like, I want to be as honest as I possibly can be, and even if there's something that I love, I'm going to point out the things about it that I don't like because I don't want to only have a lens of criticism on things that I don't like overall. I want to apply it fairly and evenly, and so if I make a video where I'm saying like, yeah, the acting was great, blah, 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 all these different things, and then I have half the video talking about my criticisms, sometimes people might get the wrong impression and think that like, oh, I didn't really like the film as much, or that they might yeah. cancel each other out, when in reality, the the praises and criticisms, they're all weighted differently, and some praises might cancel out criticisms more than others, uh, and vice versa. So the end number at the end of my review is essentially just saying like how much the achievements outweigh the flaws or vice versa. So that's, I I feel like that, you know, perhaps it's not absolutely necessary, but I do feel as though it, it does help give a better understanding to my audience as to how much I enjoyed a film. And, you know, the numbers that I give are pretty consistent. Five is average, six is above average, seven is a really good film eight is great nine is near perfect and 10 is basically perfect you know and then same thing going all the way from five to one just five is average one is the worst like barely a movie two is like technically a movie but still terrible in every way like cloverfield paradox three is like (laughs) hilariously bad like after earth four (laughs) is below average you know like flaws outweigh the achievements so i don't really see any issue to be had with uh number systems just you know the... per... yeah you put it much more eloquently than i ever could Adam. why you very you. good do they change like oh, if yeah. you look back at yeah. a, a one you yeah yeah i changed like i changed my ago. uh every you know there's i in in the same way that you said that uh 
you thought Aliens was a better film when you were younger, and then you grow up, and then it's not yeah. as good as a, a, uh, the first Alien. In that same way, you know, there's films that meant more to me that I would give a higher rating when I was younger that might be lower now, or there, and there's also films that I appreciate more as, as an adult. It's all subjective anyway, you know, you're yeah. only speaking yeah. from your so, own perspective. I think it's important... It's important we don't take them too seriously. Yeah. Like, and that, oh, they're that, that's the thing. It's like, like yeah. oh, he gave it a 10, so therefore... It's like, 10 isn't literally a perfect and, movie. Obviously, there's yeah, no such thing. Yeah, I, I agree. Unless you want to say Antichrist, which literally has no flaws in it, technically speaking. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> but, I, I, yeah, it's, I agree that the number shouldn't be an excuse to ignore the rest of what someone has said in their review to, you know, explain what yeah. the movie was and what their issues or their praises were. The number shouldn't be, like... A reason to ignore all that, but I mean, it does it does serve a purpose, I think. So, does that not annoy you guys when you see? Oh, everyone in the comments is just arguing over the number. Well, there's always. You mean? I mean, does it annoy you when you see it? Make I hate Mars bars. I don't know. Like, yeah. <laughs> no, like, there's always going to be people in the comments writing stupid shit, no matter what. Yeah. Like, it doesn't really matter. So. Yeah. No, it's just, it's just more like an audience thing. Like when you mm -hmm. when you describe why you like it, that's fine. It's just more how people like react to them because everyone's on like a different scale. And I think uh, maybe reacts differently to what my it means. audience is smarter than yours. So, oh <laughs> shit! Well, <laughs> it bothers it's me possible. more. <laughs> wow, you didn't even disagree. You're like, yeah, <laughs> yeah probably. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, it bothers me more. <laughs> it bothers me more when um when people say like, oh, I give it a seven point two. Or a yeah. seven point nine, or it's like what the fuck? The closest, Who even the cares closest that, that I'll point? go to that is like, I haven't decided yet. It's either a six or a seven. It's not an eight. It's not a five. You know, if yeah, I say that, and it's like maybe like I'll that. have a better understanding on my second watch, but I've watched it once. Here's my review, sort of thing. You know, or like when people use Rotten Tomatoes and they go, "Oh, this one has a ninety-two, and this one has an eighty-eight, so therefore I'm going to see the ninety-two percent." Oh man, that's like when the review scores really start to. I bother. have, and we talk about that in the video. I have a lot so. to say about Rotten Tomatoes, uh, but I think we should. I know you should, do. I think we, we all should do. save yeah, that absolutely. for next podcast and talk about that next time. Absolutely. I think we recorded a shit ton, way more than we thought we would. Holy fuck! <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> this is episode one. Maybe there's we a should. Lot of, there's uh, a lot of trial and error going on. So uh, this podcast will grow and develop as each episode happens. We'll figure it out. We'll get good eventually. Don't worry. What are you going to say, Should we Ralph? talk about the Reddit page where they're going to ask the questions? I did. Where were you? Oh, you did. Yeah, yeah, I did. You where were it. you? I was, I was, I was <laughs> sniffing Jenkum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, yeah. Uh, My beat. If you, if you want to ask us questions or give us suggestions, we've got a, uh, a subreddit. Sardonicast, we got Facebook page, Sardonicast, Twitter, Sardonicast, they were all free, freely available and untaken, just like me, I'm very lonely. Um, mm. And uh, next uh, podcast, I was expecting some laughter, but all I got was silence, but made it much more mm. awkward. Um, <laughs> next, I can, we could do it again, we can laugh. No, somewhere. I'll just add it in in post. Um, <laughs> okay, wait, I'll, wait, let's I'll take one of your other laughs now. from earlier in the podcast and I'll make it seem like I made something funny. Uh, <laughs> okay. uh, movie suggestion for next podcast I've got a suggestion for you guys I don't know if you've seen it or not I've recommended it before in one of my earlier videos I've mentioned it a yeah. couple times on the on, on the channel uh, but I think it's a really good film to to get more people to watch and we'll have a very interesting discussion on it uh, next podcast episode I think is the film Hausu H-A-U-S-U, -S so English translation house. It's a Japanese film from, I believe, the 1970s that is very, very entertaining. It is quite a trip, and uh, I don't really want to give away much more than that. It's a horror, like fantasy horror comedy, very strange and unique film. It's released on Criterion, so uh, Criterion Blu-ray, very good quality. Um, have you seen it? No, I've never heard oh, of this one. Perfect. Awesome. We're yeah. in for a treat. All right. I'll rewatch it before before we record our next nice episode. Nice-ass foreign movies. Um, okay, cool. I'm excited. So, yeah, uh, that's if everybody, anybody uh, in our audience wants to, uh, I guess, you know, watch the films uh, before next podcast, which will be in two weeks from when you hear this. 
Uh, then you'll be up to date on our film discussion and the spoiler thing won't matter to you. If you want to support us in any way, uh, we each have our own individual YouTube channels. They're linked in the description. Uh, Some of us have our own Mm -hmm. Patreon accounts as well. Um, We don't have a Patreon account just for this podcast because we have our own things going on. It would be a bit superfluous. But uh, yeah, so if you want to support us, check out our YouTube channel, subscribe there, watch watch some ads or whatever. <laughs> we have our own Patreons and uh yeah. you guys have any uh final closing statements before we end this this dumpster fire? <laughs> Don't watch Cloverfield. Dumpster. Which one? Um sorry, the what's it called? Paradox. <laughs> the Cloverfield paradigm. The new one. <laughs> the, clo- <laughs> the Cloverfield new one. chicken pox. <laughs> yeah, that one. I have nothing to say. You Bye. never do. Nope. Bye everybody. <laughs> Bye. Bye.